I mean, I'm going to win, so I'm not really worried about it. So then, yeah. yeah so, I mean, it, so all the complaining was for not. It's a very. When did I complain? <laughs> when did I complain? When did I complain? You're fat as fuck. You oh, can eat more hot go. dogs He's than me. Mad. You're a better bowler than me. Those are both facts. That is not a complaint. That yeah. is a fact. Okay. Fact or fiction. Fact. Fact, yeah. We were deciding the punishment you walked Like, if we in. did a... Uh, he's whatever. not that fat. Oh, On today's part in My Take, we have Billy Eichner, incredible comedian. He's got a new movie out. We talked to him about that. Billy on the street. We do our picks and preview. We have Frankie Lasagna in place of Fantasy Fuckboys, the guy who almost caught Aaron Judge's 61st home run on Wednesday night. Firefest of the week and a recap of Thursday night football. It's all brought to you by our friends at Visible. In football, no catches is a bad thing. In football, no catches can cost you the game. In wireless, no catches is a good thing and exactly what you want. In wireless, no catches cost you a lot less, as in less money. So if you want wireless that helps you save money, then you're going to want Visible. Visible offers a wireless service for $30 a month. Taxes and fees included. No catch. Make a move and switch to Visible today. Visible.com 5G ultra wideband and global calling available only on the Visible plan for data management practices. Learn more at Visible.com. Additional terms apply. I'm giving my Visible player to Evan McPherson for hitting a 57 yarder that was good from 61, I believe. 64. Incredible kick. So check out Visible right now. Visible offers a wireless Wireless service for thirty dollars a month. Taxes and fees included. No catch. Switch today at visible.com. Visible.com, the best wireless out there. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Visible, Visible.com. Switch to Visible.com for $30 a month, taxes and fees included. Thank you to Visible.com for being the presenting sponsor today. Today is Friday, September 30th, and oh, like the Tua injury was very bad. That's how we got to start because yeah. that was very, very bad. It, it was bad, and we – so it's it's tough because we don't know exactly what happened after the game against the Bills last week, but I can tell you, like, we watched that injury happen in real time. We're like, okay, he very obviously has a head injury. I think most people saw that. Yeah. He got up off the ground, shaking his head, stumbled because not his head Not touching hurt, his back. Not touching his back, and then he goes, he gets evaluated. He tells him it's his back. I don't know if they gave him the concussion test. I don't know what – because you might not even get in the protocol if they just diagnose it as a back injury, right? Yeah. But the bottom line is, like, I, I think we talked about this on Sunday night, so it's not, like, news to us. He probably shouldn't have been playing tonight, right? And it was it, it was one of those things that people could say hindsight is twenty twenty, but it wasn't really twenty twenty because a lot of people were like, "This feels weird," and then he suffers a brutal, brutal concussion, stretchered off. It was like tough to watch, and I know that some people would be like, "Oh, you're a pussy," like it's a you know it's football, but like if you're watching that and you see the way his body naturally reacted to getting concussed in his hands, it was really, really like. That was one of those hits, especially considering the fact that Sunday happened, where you're thinking not like, oh, he's out for a couple weeks or, oh, he's out for this. Like, you're like, I hope he's okay as a per Like, it has yeah. nothing to do with football. You know what I mean? Like, I hope he's just okay. There were some people really getting uh, really getting their rocks off to the injury, though, online. Oh, like, yeah. Like, chasing the clout with the injury. Um, like Stu Finer? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> Some people, some people. Oh, you didn't see Stu's oh, tweet? Pull well, up Stu's tweet and oh, get a live reaction. Uh, oh, there no. were some people just being like, I think Chris Nowinski, who's the doctor that works at the Boston University Brain Clinic, who is actually like more in tune with this stuff, but he tweeted out like, if Tua dies from secondhand or like second impact syndrome, sue everybody. It's like it's a little bit, it's too early right. to be like hey, there's throwing always, out the, the death word out there. The only thing you should be saying after an injury like that is like, that's really scary. I hope Tua is okay. And yeah. we did have as a Bills fan trending, mm -hmm. uh, which was nice. Very so classy. It, was, it was a lot of Bills fans. Stay that were classy, in it. Buffalo. Have yeah. you found it, Hank? Is it just this picture? Yeah. Yeah, that was instantly right after. What, it was what to look like after that sack. What yeah. is this from? It was from something about Mary. Something about Mary. The guy with the fucked Or maybe up it hand. wasn't something about Mary. What scary, movie? Scary movie, two. scary movie two. Yeah. Yeah. Same actor though. Something about Mary. Um. But it, yeah, it, there it was, was it was scary. Like especially going into it, we knew that at least we had talked right. about it that Tua should not have been in that game. At right. All. But, and 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 then seeing him hit the hit his head, it's like okay, this is like worst case scenario because you can actually have severe long lasting. Uh, effects from getting a second concussion that quickly. Oh yeah, and so whatever 
background research the NFLPA is doing. Here's the thing, though. Like, if you're if you're a player, your natural inclination is to say, I'm fine. I can go back in. Right. Players are always going to say that. So you can't blame players for lying about concussions to get back in the game. You can educate them and say, like, here's what to look for and here's why it's serious. So don't lie. Right. But the reality is players, especially in the NFL, when – your availability translates to millions of dollars in free agent contracts and reading up with that team. It means the world if you're able to play. They're going to lie about whether or not they feel symptoms of a concussion. So you got to take it out of their hands and have the team doctors uh, or the independent neurologists actually look at it. And it looks like, and again, we don't know all the facts and how things broke down, but it looks like there was a disconnect when two was diagnosed with a back injury where right. they didn't get the independent neurologists involved. And we'll see what they say about it after the fact. But... If he had gotten severely hurt, if it was like a long-term impacting, which it still might be, we don't know. Yeah, he is going back with the team, which is good, it's, and he was, you know, responsive and everything in the hospital. I think he was discharged, so that is good. It's but, good, yeah. but it can still Who have knows? long-term effects. We're like, not doctors. Yes, yes, Tua should sue everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. The um, Tony Gonzalez, I think, said it afterwards. He's like, let's be honest. The reason why he went in the game back in the game on Sunday is because they were playing the Bills and yeah. they're they're trying to win yeah. a division. That's that is football. Um, I also saw some people getting mad at the Amazon booth for like not uh, addressing it head on at, in their like seven minutes in halftime. This is my my big thing. And obviously Stu's tweet was stupid, but I, I'm not like going to be mad at Stu for it because I, I always, always, always hate when something bad happens and then everyone just searches for who to be mad at. And that was it's me, like that was me initially tonight. You were they were mad at me oh. because as to was on the ground, I was in the process of tweeting out a block that Alec Ingold just laid on somebody on the previous play. Right. And it was a good block. And I was like, check out this good block by Alec Ingold. I stand by the fact it was a good block. Well, yeah. like And, I, and I, then everybody just was like, dude, what the fuck is this about? Right. I was like, D I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not in a time machine. It's it's stupid. Like, I, I made a second half bet. And people were like, how could you do this? Like, yeah. Well, so, I mean, dude, I like. You're right. We need somebody to, to focus our anger at. Everyone in that always moment. does yeah. it. They always try to find the worst tweets. They always try to find the person who didn't say the exact correct thing. When you have Richard. Richard Sherman and Ryan Fitzpatrick, like I'm not caping for them, but it's their thir second broadcast, third broadcast ever, mm -hmm. and they're thrown into this situation at halftime. And they have, I think they talked about it more at length after the game, but they have seven minutes to break it down. It's like let's just let's everyone relax. It was bad. It's Tua, we hope he's okay, but you don't have to go searching the internet to be mad at someone. Yeah, it's also it's not going to fix it. It's also everybody's sitting at home watching Thursday right. night football on their televisions. And we all have, to some extent, probably like we see a devastating injury, and it's like, well, that probably wouldn't have happened if we, if all of America wasn't watching this game right, right. now. There wasn't right. a reason. There wasn't an audience out there right. uh, for Thursday night football. But it's helpful to have somebody that we can be like, that guy is actually the bad guy. Worst in guy. This situation. Yeah. He's, he's worse than me. But delete so that tweet, let, bro. Yeah, let's jump on Read that the guy. Room. But yeah, I mean, it was it was bad. I hope two is okay. I'm like I, I like Tua a lot, and I I really hope he's I hope it's something that's like I said it's not even about football. It's like I hope he's okay in general. Like it's not hey I hope Tua plays next week. It's I fucking hope Tua's brain is okay. Yeah, there because that was even take out Sunday. That was just such a violent hit. Yeah. And at any time uh, we were talking about it, like Ryan Shazier on the same field when that happened, how how horrific it was. And you have those remind like it it does. It, you have those reminders every now and then in the NFL where it's like, oh, fuck. Like, this is a very violent game and really bad things can happen. That's always weird, too, when they bring Ryan Shazier out and they, they had him, like, the first year after his devastating injury, they would have him, like, shuffling because he was making progress and, and learning how to walk again and, like, you know, going f through physical therapy. And they'd have him, you know, like, shuffling across the field, obviously in discomfort still, and people would, like stay out like round of applause. Yeah, Obviously, right. we're glad that he's okay. At he's the making, draft, yeah. But they I were making that. like a big spectacle. Of it. It's like this is kind of sad. Like, like showing yeah. him in the box. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like yeah, this is kind of a reminder that like yeah, football is a very violent sport. But, but guess what? We're all we're all kind of hypocrites in this. Oh, situation. of course, of and, course. And we still love football. Right. And players are still going to love playing football. I'm going to watch. You know, love watching football. I'm going to yeah. continue to watch. Yeah, the only thing, that, the really only thing you could say, and I don't want to be, the, this podcast is not supposed to be sanctimonious at all. It's just the concussion protocol is there to hopefully help things like this not happening, and you just hope that it's being followed. That's, like, yeah. really all you can say. And, and if it's not being followed, someone's ass should pay for that because, like, 
we you know we had the big reckoning 10 years ago when concussions became a big deal um and so you hope that like the actual medical professionals are doing their job and making sure that everyone's sa- as safe as they can be mm-hmm. knowing that football can it's never safe. be it's football, never 100% football's safe. not safe but right. make it safe right. as possible i blame jeff bezos we yeah. can that's a yes. convenient person to blame yeah, right good call. he's putting amazon Football on Thursday night. Without Jeff Bezos, this doesn't happen. Yeah. Direct all your anger at Jeff Bezos. Please. What are you going to say, Billy? Why hasn't Jeff Bezos tried to invent a machine that can definitively tell you if someone is concussed? Like or a X-ray. helmet that can yes. definitively uh-huh. uh, he, he, make it so you can't be concussed. He's invested in football. Now he really has got to put his money where his mouth is. Yeah, anti-concussion really, helmets. Yeah. Like, like save that. football, Jeff Bezos. Save football, save the world. You'll be the, the most popular man in the world. Yeah. Um. All right, so let's talk about the game. Uh, Bengals... Zach Taylor was on my shit list for a minute there. He's a loser. Kicking a field goal from the one-inch line um, in the, was the no, start of the fourth quarter. It was a one-yard line because the analytics Prisco, yeah. don't tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. but then he kind of redeemed himself by doing the correct thing in taking that last deep shot that sealed the game because that was definitely a spot where he could have been very conservative, run the ball three times, punted, played defense. Um, so, yeah, the Bengals, I, I don't want to say they're – like back because it's, it does still feel like there's they have drives where it's just very clunky and yeah. like disorganized well, th- that's how they've always been though the Bengals true they, so they they have a lot of drives that stall out but I feel like they also lead the league in just taking shots yeah big plays just deep ball they love the deep ball and so they can have some drives where you know or some games where Joe Mixon rushes 20 times for 65 yards or whatever it is that feels like a normal Joe Mixon stat line yeah but then you've got like four shots over the top from Joe Burrow to Chase or to T Higgins who we talked about this a little bit during the game T Higgins should be 5 foot 8 170 pounds he's a speedster yeah T the name T Higgins screams to me speedster in the slot you forget that he's like a monster and still fast though and i i also didn't like that Jamar Chase is wearing black cleats with the all white unis i thought that mm-hmm. looked slow uh, Tyler Boyd looked a lot faster just by having the white cleats on. Like yeah. that's that's one of those ones that when you do the custom uniform in Madden, you always go white socks, white cleats, like everything the same. Yep. So you just look lightning fast. I like I did like the white helmets a lot. Yeah, uh, there was a great uniform matchup for Thursday night. Yep, I feel like if this was on a Sunday. It's trash. If it's a Sunday, it's candy ass. Yep. This is a perfect uniform matchup for Thursday night. That's when we get all the weird uniforms out there. You'll remember the mustard yellow Jacksonville Jaguars uniforms. That's also when we had, like, the Bills Jets colorblind bowl. Yep. Where no one could tell the difference. Uh, that, that, to me, is, like, that's meant for Thursday nights. You yes. keep that on a Thursday night in September or October, and then you roll out the real jerseys later on. Now, if the Dolphins wear these uniforms, once the weather gets – below i'd say 50 degrees yeah they're fucked then they're candy ass losers but you can wear this right now yeah and if the bengals wear those white uniforms in snow holy shit that would be illegal probably right they would have to be but if it isn't they should do it. they should absolutely because that would be very difficult to to defend they're basically wearing camouflage i would watch i think i would hate watching it but i would bet the shit out of the oh yeah game absolutely so yeah the bengals i mean it feels like I, i don't even know who they have up next i've the I, only other note I had about the uniforms is that Matt Raven Sunday night. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that will actually be their big test of like, are they back? Because if they can win that game in Baltimore, be three and two, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. look, the Bengals, they're they're now. Because I feel like, wouldn't you say that through through four weeks, the Bengals have had they're they're at that step below tier in the AFC, where it's like I I still think that it's very early in the season. They could obviously put it all back together because they have all the talent. It's just like they haven't been playing football where you're like, oh, they're they're out humming right I, from the start. I think they're kind of in the same position they were last year. Which oh, yeah. Is, which is like they're an above-average team. They could get they, hot. They've got a, a great quarterback. They've got maybe the best receivers in the NFL. No, definitively. Definitively. Decided, yeah. Number one, the best receivers in the NFL. Don't ask us who numbers two and three are. And if they just stay healthy, yeah, like they, I think they were like the healthiest team last year, yeah. So if they can just maintain this, like their their uh, roster right now, not have any devastating injuries, hopefully get the offensive line to continue to gel, then yeah, they could they be get good hot. at the end. Yeah, they um, get hot. But yeah, the other only uh, note that I had about these uniforms is I don't believe that the Bengals can run the football in these uniforms. Mm, yeah. And likewise, I don't think that the Dolphins can run the football in these uniforms. Yeah. This is like a take a shot over the top game. Unless there's snow. Unless there's they snow. They could absolutely run in, the ball in In which case, snow. because they get lost. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a good game, obviously. Other than the Tua um, unders in prime time are now just. I think it's every prime time game. It's a wagon, so except just, for the fucking Monday night. Try to get on it. What? Oh yeah, Monday night. Wait, Monday didn't go over. I thought it was thirty nine and a half. No, it was thirty eight and a half. Oh, Disgusting. it was started as thirty nine and a half. It went down to thirty eight and a half. Okay, yeah. So that was except for Monday night. Um, and that was the most under game of all time. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Um, Judge sixty one. We want to talk about it real quick. We have Frankie Lasagna on. So feels like he, now it's in tragedy era. Yeah, yeah, and he's going to get walked a shitload. Yeah. So I, it, it was who's, cool. Who would, who would walk him though? Why walk him? Why? Because a pitcher doesn't want to be the guy that gives it up to him. That's lame. Who wants who wants to go down as in a Yankees history, hater? I'll, Hank, I'll say that's who wants lame. to go down in history as the guy that gave up the what sixth, sixth most best, home run yeah. of all time. Now I'm starting to now go back. Like I, I agree that I've always agreed it's kind of stupid. Um, it's been very selfish for a bet reason, but I'm now like the amount of people who have to point out every time he hits a home run. Being like, oh, now he's six. It's like, dude, he's having an insane. Season. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, and let's just say, and he also bet on himself this year. So it's not just the home runs that he's hitting. He's going to get the triple crown. He might get the quadruple crown. Is I don't know. I don't know crown? what the fourth is. I think so. Is I his think, average there? I don't, I don't think, so. think so. I think he's like tied for first. They're very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. I the, think it is. Where, I'm looking, I'm yeah, looking. yeah. Give us the whole triple crown. Listen, my fantasy baseball team's doing pretty well. I've been staying up to date on my stats. Miggy I, got it a few years ago. Remember that? Yeah. So I, I. Yes, I agree. He's having a fantastic season regardless. Of but you know what I mean? We've now gone all the way to the backwards where it's like, who cares? Six. Like, I, let's just pretend that we're not covering it with the home. Like, he's just having an insane season. Yeah, he's, he's, having, he's having a great year. No. Yep. Sorry. So, Luis Arias of the Twins is at 315. Judge is at 313. So, it's a coin flip. Okay. That, yeah, but I mean, how many? With, with the eight amount games? Of, yeah, it's, yeah. It's definitely, it's more than enough. It's possible. To it's go possible. either way. Yeah, I guess if one of them, if you have one game where you go like four for five, yeah, three fifteen, three thirty, probably go, yeah, yeah. And, and if he goes, or I goes got, over five twice, RBIs. that drops him. Uh, RBI, uh, yes, one thirty, and Jose Ramirez has one nineteen, so he's okay. Clear. Yeah, so he's got that. Alonso's one thirty one, but he's AL got, only. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So, Anything else? Yeah, yeah. With the with the judge thing, I just want to give a shout out because we haven't really talked about. The impact Stan hits behind him, right? Yeah. So, uh, no, well, kind of. So, but, He's hits. They've been batting Judge first and Stanton fifth. Okay, so, but but Stanton sometimes hits yeah. behind him. No one's yeah. given Stan any credit for this though, because I feel like you know going back to Roger Maris, he had Mickey Mantle hitting behind him. That's true. why I got all those pitches to hit. They put together a good lineup around Judge too. Yeah. Yeah. Did they put him – how long has he been batting first? Has it been because he wants to get I more think, bats? I think that's part of it. He definitely hasn't been the whole season, but recently, But recently, yes. like the last, like, three weeks, I feel like yeah. he's always batting first. I think it's – Which I kind of like. And it's, now that the division's clinched. Yeah, they're like, all, let's get this guy his home runs. Let's make sure he yeah. gets the max. He's hitting it tonight, run. by the way. Oh, because you're going to be there. Yeah, he's hitting it. Okay. 62. Are you all in right. the outfield? You're calling the shot? No. How are you not in the outfield? I don't want to get hurt. Oh my, oh my god. god. Okay, okay. That was a joke. I, no, I don't think joke. that was a joke. There was some truth <laughs> in that was. joke. There's no. some truth in that joke. We've got a lot of truths and jokes jokes today. Yeah. Um, yeah, we actually tuned. should do a preview because we're gonna kick our kick it back to ourselves in the studio. Very contentious. I think Hank and I are good uh. now. But uh you're gonna hear when when things got hot <laughs> in the studio. We have finally decided the bet. So uh that's good. Uh but yeah. <laughs> things got hot. The good thing is with this podcast is we've been doing it for so long that things can get very hot and then they just cool off right away because we've just been with each other for fucking every day for seven years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a quick, quick snap. <laughs> yeah, was, but tune in. It was fun. And then we have Frank Lasagna and Billy Eichner. Great football weekend coming up. Great college slate. Great NFL slate. And uh, yeah, let's kick it to ourselves in studio. Okay, before we get to week four picks and preview... Uh, pardon my cheese steak. Pardon my cheese steak. You can see it behind Hank right now. Pardon my cheese steak is a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheese steaks and loaded fries. Pardon my cheese steak is now available in hundreds of select n- locations nationwide, with new locations being added every week. Part of my cheesesteaks menu features 6-inch and 12-inch classic cheesesteaks, chipotle cheesesteaks, my personal favorite, or buffalo chicken cheesesteaks, plus loaded fries and dessert brownie bites. Get lunch, dinner, or late-night delivery, and we're open seven days a week. Go to pardonmycheesesteak.com to learn more and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. 
pardonmycheesesteak.com to learn more and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. We have new locations opening every single week. It is the perfect Saturday or Sunday meal. Don't have to get off your couch. Get the part of my cheesesteak today. Okay, week four. Picks, preview, and we have decided on the punishment. We heard the feedback. They're like, this is stupid. If you keep doing picks with no punishment. So the punishment is thus. Uh, the loser of the picks, the year-long picks competition, and the second place person will have to be going, will be basically locked in a bowling alley. Inside the bowling alley, they have to bowl a perfect game to get out of the bowling alley. The only catch being every time they eat a hot dog, if you're the last place person, it counts as five pins off your score. If you're the second place person, it counts as ten pins off your score. So if you eat, let's say you're the last place person, you eat ten hot dogs, you now have to you you now have to bowl a two fifty to count as a perfect game. I have a question, Big Cat. Yes, that sounds impossible. It does. Well, it's supposed to be hard. That wasn't a question. That was yeah. just a statement of fact. My question <laughs> is, how long are the days, Big Cat? Are they going to be locked in there for twenty four hours a day? Good question. Thank no, you. we have decided that. Uh, I would we say ten hour days? Ten hour days. Let's do let's do an even twelve. Let's make it an even okay, twelve hour. Twelve days. hour days. So if you're in I'm there, I'm going to really regret that when it's me. Yeah. I can tell yeah. already. Like, what the fuck did you just do to yourself, PF? Yeah. So you have to be in there for twelve hours, then you can leave and go home. And your hot dogs do count for the next day. So it could be last place person has to be in there for three, four days if they suck at bowling and eating. Um, I think we all suck at bowling. I don't. I'm very bad at bowling. Go yeah. ahead, Hank. You're pretty good at bowling, Big Cat. I, I don't think so. I think the best I've ever scored is like a 160, and that was the best score I got. If I break a hundred, I'll be happy because I don't. I don't really bowl. I, I just don't do it. I think you. I, think I was we, a candle pin guy growing up. I think, and then I learned that they don't exist anywhere outside. Yeah, of candle pin. It's just like those are the tiny little ones with a small ball, right? Yeah. Is that harder? I don't know. That's all I ever did, and then I, I grew up and. I think they just, they're not out there anymore. I think bowling is just hard in general, but I do think that if you bowl for enough times, you will get better. Like, you do get better as you bowl. My key in bowling, I've found, it, like in so many other things that I try to do, is to have the exact right amount of beers as I'm doing it. Yeah. So you get to the place where you're not drunk, but you're buzzed, and you're just like, you're not overthinking anything. You got the smooth coordination. I just have to maintain that kind of like .07 blood alcohol content oh, should ratio. We, should we add Coors Light equals one pin off? I like that. Yeah, I yeah. do. I do okay. like that. Coors so one Light. Coors Light equals uh -huh. one pin off. Now we're cooking. Now Billy's responsibly. Got, Billy's just going to drink three hundred beers. Yeah, <laughs> and leave. You're going to sit there. I was concerned about this, but now I'm ready. I mean, you got to find that level though, because if you get too yeah. drunk, you're not going to be able to bowl well enough. Now I do have a question myself. Uh, you know, we say twelve hour days. What if what if you never get it? You will. Uh, you will because eventually. You, eventually you'll eat enough hot dogs. Like if you don't, right? That's the whole point. Like so. Let's just say you suck so bad at bowling, and the best you've ever bowled is 100, okay? You go in Monday, you eat, let's just say, 10 hot dogs. Now you have to bowl 250. You go in Tuesday, eat another 10 hot dogs. Now you have to bowl 200. You go in Wednesday, another 10 hot dogs. You go in Thursday, another 10 hot dogs. Now you have to just bowl a uh, 100, and you should be able to get out. The so news. it's eventually going to end but it will also possibly take a long time, and we will stream the thing for the AWLs. It will become mind-numbingly boring and tedious and terrible for the loser of this competition. And second place, but second place will actually get the benefit of being able to leave earlier and having it be, like, over for them. I think where, second place should have 10-hour days. Yeah, that's fine. And, and last place should have 12-hour days. I would assume it's the second place person can probably get out in one day. If they just eat like so. 14 hot dogs, they have to bowl a 160. The good news is if you're That's not a, a great bowler and you just eat a ton of hot dogs, you'll probably have a heart attack from all the sodium and die. So you probably won't be in there for longer than a week anyways, regardless yeah. of what you're bowling. That is a lot of hot dogs, but it's 12 hours. Like, you don't think you can eat 14? That's not... Can we do days? We're, just, we're, the, we're, we're on different, different just, wavelengths when it comes to food. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think that 14 hot dogs over 12 hours is like an insane amount. It's really not. I didn't say it's, I'd say it's a lot. You ate 24 over 24 hours, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, when we did so, the live stream. But that was some with no buns. Can we do Can we do? Oh, we have to do buns too? Three? Oh, yeah. It's a hot dog. Can we do what, Billy? Can well, we, like, day three, can we do bumpers? 
just like to no no no, no. stop okay. we're not adding any more that, that we're not adding any more qualifiers. one more okay go enough. ahead if if you, turn, this turn into a yeah, Jeff D. Okay. this is gonna be bad no go ahead rules. just say it say it no if fish, you convert yeah. a seven ten split you're out no no seven, none of us are gonna seven get it seven ten. no that's no. it it may how about this if you convert a seven ten split uh, we'll one pin. <laughs> yeah, we'll take one, two, one, one pin off. Do you guys understand how hard it is? What yeah, does that but mean? I did that in Wii Bowling like every day. Yeah. No, 7 is the back row, the two corner ones, getting them together. If you get a 7 10 split, we'll make you a t shirt that says, like, Good job. I converted yeah, okay. a 7 10 split, and all I got was this lousy t shirt. Yeah, I converted a 7 10 split, and I still only scored uh, 107 in, on my fourth day of bowling mm -hmm. in the part of my take bowling challenge. Um, okay, so there it is. It sucks for the loser, for sure. It sucks for second place. Not as bad, but it definitely sucks. And I think people will have fun watching it, especially if it's like a three-day affair. Where yeah. It's like, got to go back to the fucking bowling mines yeah. and try to try to complete this challenge. It's been a while since I've been in a bowling alley, too. Just I, I miss the smell. The last time I've been, I was in a bowling alley, I want to say, was um, the Final Four in Minneapolis. In like yeah, 20, just, no, I, actually, nope. I found it. Fact, yeah. check, fact check, not true. Oh, did we because go Because the last one? time we are in a bowling alley... Was in Dan Bilzerian's house. <laughs> that was. He has a bowling alley in his foyer. Okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I forgot that he does. And that guy has everything. He does. We didn't bowl, though. Except he's, for someone who truly loves you him. You tweeted out a score when we went uh, for the Final Four, and it's not looking good for me and Billy. What it was my score? Billy got a 73. Oh, no, that was, no that that's, was, that that was, was from years Ohio. Ago. That was way long ago. That was in Sandusky. Oh, that yeah. was, uh, that yes. was the, uh, okay, still, yeah. though, I don't think, I mean, that's, I bowled that time, and then I bowled in the Final Four. Billy got a 73, PFT got a 110, I got a 94, Big Hat got a 169. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, and you were trying. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I, no. I, that was, what, do you think I'm a good bowler? No, but like I remember that day. You are. You were just, I, you're, you're I, definitely. A I don't think I'm a very good bowler. Right, so Hank, why don't you pick a judgment? Let's start all over from square one. <laughs> no, we're, we're going to do. We're going to do this I punishment. I, I have. We're I have no problem with being a good bowler. You are a good bowler. That's not like. Not, a, that's not like. A, I'm, I'm not, not a good bowler. I'm not making. I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing both like sides of the situation. I'm just, I just stating I'm a so fact. Sick of this. Because in my experience with you, you are the best bowler that I've played with. Jake is better. Number one, I think that this is a fair punishment, and we'll go ahead and we'll follow through on this punishment but number two big cat is definitely the best bowler in jake, this room jake just said his average what's no, your i think my best is like 150 okay oh. max what's yours i rock at bowling okay. i'm a fucking beast <laughs> <laughs> so there you go i'm just sick of uh deciding a punishment so uh, i like this hank punishment. Like i like this punishment, punishment too punishment, I, you can. I, you're just putting words in how, my about, mouth. how about hank can have a different punishment sure no, great no, i don't no, care no yeah that works for me um okay Hank, any last words? No. This is going to be awesome. I mean, I'm going to win, so I'm not really worried about it. So then, yeah. yeah so, I mean, it, so all the complaining was for not. It's a very. When did I complain? <laughs> when did I complain? When did I complain? You're fat as fuck. You oh, can eat more hot go. dogs He's than me. Mad. You're a better bowler than me. Those are both facts. That is not a complaint. That yeah. is a fact. Okay. Fact or fiction? Fact. Fact, yeah. We were deciding the punishment you walked Like, if we in. did a. Uh, he's whatever. not that fat. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's like if we were doing like. You a, already a, called me fat as fuck, so go ahead. Go off. All gloves are off. No, it's fine. It's fine. What? It's go fine. ahead. I'm excited. No, go ahead. I'm just <laughs> let it let it let it fly. You're clearly mad, so let it no, fly. No, I just mad when you say that I'm complaining. Go. When all I'm just pointing out is like there's a let difference it go. between you eating and me eating, and there's you're a better bowler than me. So I'm let not it go. complaining. I'm just again, fact or fiction, <laughs> fact. It's gonna it it, wait, wait. It's gonna rock when Hank finishes in last place and Big Cat finishes <laughs> in second, and Big Cat gets out of there in like six hours. And uh, I will do any days. punishment <laughs> Hank wants to give me because it's clearly not fair for him. So <laughs> I'm down for that. You he's, are are creating narratives out of the sky. The we, you also might see it on PMTV, but Hank came in and and was on a conference call, and I he was like, "This you're fat. You're going to be able to eat so many more hot dogs." And so I tried to change. Oh, I the, said seems I tried to the change boys. the punishment to like to help him. And I was talking directly to him for three minutes, and then he took his headphones out. He goes, what'd you say? I'm on a call. And I was like, I said okay, I was on a call mind. before you came in, but I guess <laughs> so it's like, been a long, you it's, a, it's a long process. So All I right, guess let's, this is it. Let, let's cut it off at the hip here. We've set our piece. Yeah, I'm the excited. The punishment this is, is set. I'm fat as fuck. I'm excited too. Big Cat's fat. Fat as fuck and uh, the best bowler in the world. Really fat. Yep. Fat as fuck. <laughs> like, right, that like, was obese. Was, I just you. No, you're you not saying I'm You called me fat as fuck. You like, saying I'm complaining. Yeah, I'm surprised triggered me. that you made it in to work today. I I barely. I need to Did get a scooter get, again. I thought you had to get one of those like special <laughs> uh, Mercedes vans yeah. with the big sliding doors. Fat to get as in. fuck. Yes. Yes. 
Really S- fat. Yeah. So fat. Morbidly. Fat as fuck. Um, okay. Update your will. Sh- Listen, dude. I'm going to die any minute mm-hmm. here. So fucking fat. Uh, all right. Actually, Hank, you're sick. You probably shouldn't have come into work. Yeah, that given, too. Given Big Cat's BMI, yes. you probably will kill him. I'm I'm high risk, Hank. Why would you do that? <laughs> all right. I, Why I, would you come you into work? I was complaining and sick. I got triggered. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's I get know to the you're picks. Not. All right. We're going to do it in order now. Let's see if Meme sent it. He did. Okay. Here we go. Um, we're going to do this in order. You want the standings first? Sure. Give us the standings. All right. Congratulations, PFT. 4-0. Oh. Thank you, Jake. Now tie for first with Big Cat at 6-6, six and six, Hank 5-7, and seven, Max 4-8, and eight, me and Billy 3-9. and nine. Okay. Um, here we go. So here we're going to do it in order now. So there's a little mi- bit. Uh, it makes a little more sense when we're doing the whole uh, slate. So we're going to start chronologically. The London game is first. I will sit memes sent me everyone sent their picks to memes. We'll talk about every game this way and then we will go through all the picks. So memes sent me um, all the picks. Vikings at Saints in London. Uh, I think this might be Andy Dalton. It could be Andy Dalton because James this might be Andy Dalton. I feel like a, a, a cross continent trip or a bicontinent trip with James Winston's four injured vertebrae in his back is probably not the best thing for it. Correct. Um, so it could be Andy Dalton who's I feel like he's built for London, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the last time Kirk Cousins and Andy Dalton played each other in London, I think it was a tie. Ooh. I would love to see another tie over there. I might I might be making that up, but I'm pretty sure it was the Washington R words against the Cincinnati Bengals. That's sticking out in my mind for some reason. I also feel like Kirk Cousins, if we're looking at the Kirk Cousins life cycle, I've I've mulled this over in my head for a few days right now to figure out where we're at with an early game in London. Because it's kind of like an inverse primetime game. Yep. I think it's just so early that the ratings will be so low that I kind of want to bet on Kirk in this game. 2016 tie. You're yep. Right. In London. There we go. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so you want to bet on Kirk, but you didn't pick it. I but did you not bet it. But that's, right. that's my bonus one. Yeah. So uh, the picks on this one, Jake and Hank both have the under. They're taking the under under one under, have under to. 43 have to. and a half. Yeah, have to. Um, a little stat for you. Uh, last five seasons, I think we've talked about it on this show, but the Saints in October for some reason are just really good. So they've covered 72.2% of their games in October. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a Sean Payton stat, a Drew Brees stat, whatever it may be, they're good in October. Also, Justin Jefferson, uh, nine catches, 62 yards since Aaron Rodgers said he was the best player in the NFL. Interesting. Hmm. So I, I was thinking about the Lunder on this one too, but I feel like the, the true Lunder is going to be the Jaguars game. Yeah, that's when I think Lunder. I think when the Jaguars go to London. Yes, 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 yes I think yes. I think that's and that's I think on October thirtieth this year. Sounds great. So it's the last one. Perfect. Um, okay, next up, Browns Falcons. Uh, this game is in Atlanta. I'm looking right now. I have the over forty eight in PFT. You have the Falcons plus one and a half. Those are the picks on these games. Yep. On this game. Um, you want to talk about why you like the Falcons? I like the vibes on uh, on Will Compton getting a workout. Yeah. They're 1-0 and since they announced that his workout was coming up in like a month. So I'm going to ride the hot hand on that one. I also just like the Falcons at home. I have kind of a hot take on the Falcons. Okay. I actually don't think they're that bad. Their defense is bad. Their, Their defense offense is, is yeah. fun. Their offense is fun, so they're not that bad. Right. If you There's, have if you, if one of your units is fun, you can, people will be like, oh, they got something. Yeah, I've got a, a new tier for the Falcons in your power range. It's just... They're not that bad. Yeah. They're, they're not as bad as you think they are because their offense, when they do get the ball to their playmakers, they're actually scoring a shitload of points. Yeah. They're frisky and fun is, I think, my exact ranking for them. I, I took the over in this game, and this is one of those, like, hey, are you just walking into a trap? But the Browns and the Falcons, every, this this season so far, it's been like 65% unders, right? Mm-hmm. The Browns and the Falcons are both 3-0 and to the over. They've, oh, they've gone over in every single one of their games. Yeah. I just maybe I'm walking in the trap. No Miles Garrett? Probably not. That car looked bad. It did look bad. Looked really bad. What's the name of this? Oh yeah, yeah, my, keep him away from Mercedes-Benz. Yes, the Mercedes-Benz costs. domes. I yeah. think he was driving a Porsche, but still. It plays the but, yeah. the butthole dome. Yes. Um also Nick Chubb could he do 2000 yards this year? Dude, I, I think Nick Chubb is probably he he might be my favorite running back in the NFL. He's maybe not the best overall. He's definitely top five, but I think he's my favorite to watch. He, we haven't had a 2,000-yard rusher since Adrian Peterson in 2012. It would be crazy if Nick Chubb did it while also sharing carries with Kareem Hunt. Mm-hmm. 
it's just gonna get. I'm gonna die. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die. I'm, you know that I. Did ha- you get I probably boosted? have asthma and diabetes, and he's just coughing in all of our. Did faces. you get boosted? I'm fat as fuck. Um, no, they could. They, I was too fat to get it. That's crazy. They're, They're like, this will probably needle. kill you. Uh, Nick Chubb has 341 rushing yards so far. So obviously he's not on pace. Mm-hmm. But I was just thinking about it. Wouldn't it be fun if we had a 2,000 yard rusher? It would be very fun. I like that. It would be fun. So who have we had recently? It's been Adrian Peterson. It was Chris Johnson. And then uh, Jamal Lewis and Terrell Davis. That's it. Yeah. And Just then, so uh, obviously, before that, Barry Sanders, um, OJ, and Eric Dickerson, yep. I believe, is the full list. So it, not a lot. Adrian Peterson ruined the 2,000 yards because he, he did it right after he was coming off an ACL surgery. Yep. So everybody else, from that point, if you've got an ACL injury, it's like, it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, next game up, the Commanders at Cowboys. Commanders at Cowboys. uh PFT, I'll let you just talk about it however you want to talk about it. The yeah. cu- Cowboys are minus three and a half. The over under is forty one and a half. Let me tell you who the pi- if anyone has picks on these. Billy has the under in this game, and that's the only one we've got in this game. Actually, it's the over. You have the over. Yeah. Okay, you have the over. I read it wrong. You're right. You have the over in this game, forty one and a half. Uh, PFT. Yeah, all, all I really want to say about this is um, I went back. I looked at the tape from last week, twenty four eight against the Eagles. The Commanders, they actually only lost one quarter. Mm. So as we know that it's a game of quarters, much like the NBA. Yep. And they lost the second quarter 24-0. to zero. Mm-hmm. That's tough to come back from. They won the rest of the quarters cumulatively 8-0. to zero. So are the Commanders really that bad? It sounds like they beat the Eagles three times out of four to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, they stink. They actually do stink. They're a bad football team. They're depressing to watch. And I'm just saying to myself, you know what? They lost so badly last week. The Cowboys won a game that people thought that maybe they couldn't win last week. I'm going to just bet on the Commanders to cover the spread regardless. The thing that makes me nervous about the Commanders is uh, Carson Wentz has been sacked 14 times in the last two games, and the Cowboys are pretty good at rushing the passer. Yeah. No, that uh, feels like... Michael Parsons might kill him. Yeah, that feels like he's going to be running for his life and making... And he didn't throw an interception last week. So he's statistically do. The fumbles were <laughs> the fumbles and the sacks were equivalent to several interceptions. Yes, Billy. So why do you like the under? Uh, the over. Uh, the over. Sorry. So just t- t- this week, I'm going total gut and just reacting and gambling on just like the first thought in my head. And Cooper Rush was pretty electric, so he's going to score a lot of points. Okay. Okay. I like that. Just get all up in those guts. Yeah. Cooper just Rush. all gutty. Nice. Uh, okay. Next game: Titans, Colts. Or sorry, Seahawks, Lions. Seahawks, Lions. The Lions are, I think, four-and-a-half-point favorites, which is kind of crazy to say. Uh, Four-point favorites. Over-under is 48 in this game. Uh, let's see who has this game. I'll do a better job last week. next week. I Memes sent it back to me like two seconds before we started. Jake and PFT both have the Lions, minus four. Mm-hmm. Who? Either of you want to state your case? Yeah, obviously a heartbreaking loss for the Lions last week against Minnesota, but we've seen uh, – sparks of them being a very good playoff contender and i think this is a favorable matchup i think the seahawks are very bad yeah i think the uh the lions have found themselves in uncharted waters for detroit fans out there which is if you win this game like you're supposed to this is a game that you have to win because you're supposed to win it right at home which you've really never gone into a game with expectations um at least in recent history and i do think that if the lions if they win and they cover which i think they will then we need to start saying, like, the Detroit Lions, let's get some playoff buzz going for them. Yes. yes. I have the Seahawks Max in this game as Max has the Seahawks. Well. Why do you like the Seahawks, Max? Um, the really good thing about the Lions this year has been their offense, and DeAndre Swift and Amon Ross St. Brown have basically been the reason of that offense. And Jared both, Goff. Jared Goff as well. But Swift and St. Brown are both hurt, so I don't know what that offense is going to look like without those two guys. Mm. Just all Jared Goff. My my entire Seahawks strategy is just uh, they they will stick in everyone's head from Monday night week one against the Broncos, and just remember to yourself, like, that's not who they are. They actually stink. It's very similar to my strategy with the Jets. Mm-hmm. Everyone remembers the incredible comeback with the Browns and be like, no, think about it the other way. If Nick Chubb had gone down, the Jets would have – would have lost every single game this season by two touchdowns or more. Yeah, just think of that Monday night game and remember the fact that the Broncos fumbled the ball twice, I think, on the one-yard line. And Nathaniel Hackett. And Nathaniel Hackett just pooped, just diarrhea came out of his ear at the end of the game. Yes, yes, and Nathaniel Hackett was Nathaniel Hackett. Um, Okay, next up, Titans at Colts. Uh, Titans at Colts. 
the I, this game, Colts are minus three and a half. Over under is forty three. This is one of those games I hope I don't see often on on red zone. It's just boring. Why? Yeah. I know they uh, have to play each other. It's not really like loser leaves town. It's the opposite of that. It's like winner returns from exile. Mm-hmm. Like the winner of this game, I think, could actually be a favorite to win that division. Yes. Down the road, even though they both are kind of boring and stupid. Yeah, so no one has this game, which kind of speaks to this game. I, it's a coin flip. I like the Colts, I think. I think. Because everybody wrote them off. They probably got some If you beat the Chiefs, you probably go into the next week. Saying to yourself, we can literally beat anyone. What's is don't is the roof going to be open? Jake, can you get a, where, a forecast for us? You don't know just yet. I've been I've got tweet alerts on for Jim Irsay, and I'm a fucking warrior because even in the off season, I just don't leave them on. Seventy one and sunny. So the roof will probably be open. Oh, so I just get tweet alerts every single time Jim Irsay tweets. Uh, Twelve months a year, just so that I can be on top of these. I don't want to forget a week during football season. So last, it really season, only applies to like. It's re- six weeks. It's seven, yeah. Yeah, like mid-October, it's just the roof is closed. Yeah, and into November, roofs. But I don't want to miss those <laughs> right, weeks, so right. I leave them on year-round. Uh, this year, he made the announcement on Sunday. I don't like that, Jim. Bring it back, please, to earlier in the week. But I think it's more so like you don't want to give away the game plan to your opponent. Right. And we saw last week, it ended up working in their favor. Teams start wearing visors. Yeah, you never like know. They can, they can chain up, change up their equipment. Um, okay, another game that sucks. The Bears at Giants. This game sucks. Uh, let's see. No one has this game as well. It speaks to these these games when no mm-hmm. one's betting on these games. Um, if Justin Fields, if every ga- every game gets canceled except the Bears and the Giants on Sunday, and Justin Fields has seventy two pass completions, he will be in first place for pass completions in the NFL. That's incredible. That's pretty good, right? I mean, there's a hurricane coming. It could happen. <laughs> yeah. So he just needs to complete seventy two passes on Sunday. Yeah. And no one else completes a single pass. That, that could happen. You never know. I'm, I'm also on the watch for when Roger Goodell is going to have to make that phone call to Brian Dable still yeah. about the hat. Yeah. Like the FDNY hat. He's he's No one's going to get mad at you for wearing an FDNY hat, but Roger Goodell eventually is, and he's dreading the day he has to make that call where he's like, hey, um, Brian, I know you're kind of new here, but um, and we definitely support the fire department, and we love those guys, first responders, but... New Era pays us a fuckload of money right. to wear their hats, so could we? Could you stop wearing the fucking hat? Yeah. And don't tell anyone we had this conversation. It's a rock and a hard place. It's going to sure. happen. Yes, yes. Um, okay, uh, also the Giants have seven straight covers on short weeks. I don't know if that even matters with a new coach, but that's just one of those weird anomaly stats that you throw out there. It's. I love the stats where you can just look. At it. We have so... The internet is so deep, you can just find any stat to back up your bet. Mm-hmm. And I, I suggest doing it. That way, if you're wrong, you can just throw that in people's faces and be like, well, the numbers say I go bet for it because it. of this. Yeah. Uh, okay, next up. This one actually is one of the premier games on Sunday. Jaguars-Eagles. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot of action in this game. Myself, Max, and Billy all taking the Eagles. And uh, PFT has the under, and then Hank has the over. Oh, and Jake has the the Jaguars, so we all bet this game. Nice. We all have this game, so I don't know which way, which angle we want to start with. Hank, what did you have? You had the over. I got the over. Two two dynamic quarterbacks. A lot of points. Okay. okay, nice. Fun game to watch. Marquee matchup. We'll have the sound on. That's kind of that was kind of the basis of the over. It's like the sound will be on. We'll be watching it. I want points. Yeah. And then PFT, you had uh, the under. Huh? The under. Doug Peterson revenge game. I think. Uh, the Eagles' defense is going to eat. Yes. Because uh, the Jaguars' offense, like, yeah, Trevor Lawrence looks good, but especially in week one when there was a lot of pressure that got put on them, their tight ends can't block good pass rushers. So I feel like the Eagles excel at getting to the quarterback just based on what we saw last week alone. But they're they're a very good defensive team. So I think they're going to, to borrow a phrase from Stephen Che, they're going to heat up the quarterback a little bit this weekend. Trevor Lawrence will be heated up. Um, I do have a bet also on A.J. Brown. So AJ Brown yeah. is having a baby, or his his uh, wife or girlfriend or whoever it is. He's going to be a dad. So we're doing the baby bump. The part of my take baby bump is coming out on the Barstool Sportsbook, where we're going to boost that plus the Eagles to win. Um, so yes, definitely betting on that this weekend. Also, I've got a scandal that's brewing right now okay. in Jacksonville. Okay. Trevor Lawrence, um, he won the first Offensive Player of the Week since 2010. For the Jaguars, mm-hmm. when it was David Garrard, that was the last time they won it. So he w- obviously had a great week last week. 
the MVP award for the week went to Lamar Jackson. That's hmm. fine. Lamar Jackson had a great week, right? They put the vote out. Trevor Lawrence had 90% of the vote. Huh. This is according to BigCatCountry.com. Okay. Check them out. They're a one-stop shop for Jaguars news. Uh, 90% of the vote went to Trevor Lawrence. Nickelodeon deleted the tweet and then just gave the award to Lamar Jackson. Ooh. It's a scandal. It's a scandal going on. That's all I'm saying is stop the steal. If Jack Del Rio was still in Jacksonville, this would go down totally differently. But it's fucked up justice for Trevor Lawrence. Okay. I, that is a big scandal. Mm -hmm. We need we need ju justice for Trevor Lawrence. I'm taking the Eagles here just because I think everyone – I like the Jaguars. Nice team. But, like, putting it all into perspective, they beat a, a beat-up Colts team that they always beat in Jacksonville. And then they beat up a very beat-up uh, Chargers team. Then have to fly all the way across the country and play an Eagles team that's rolling. I think it's going to be a little market correction of, like, the Jags are good. They're not on this level. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake, do you want to say anything for your Jaguars bet? You just like them? They're playing frisky? Yeah, Doug Peterson coming back. That's it. That's it. That's to say no more. Right in the hot hand. Say no more. Yeah. Say no more. Okay, next I, up. I also feel like just most of these games I want to bet the unders on because the hurricane is going to affect so many different stadiums. Yep. So it's going to be wet as shit there. Yes, yes. It's going to be, yeah, the, like the Bills-Ravens game, I want to bet the over so bad, but I figure it's going to be Hurricane City. Yep. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Jets at Steelers. Billy, as first reported by Billy Football, Zach Wilson is starting. He's back. How are you feeling? Uh, we're really going to turn over a new leaf with this Jets team. I think, you know, one out of three Flacco getting us to add to the record. I think now we're going to start looking at the Jets, at what they really are and what they really will perform as. So, you know, onward and upward. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so you're we're saying, you basically you're saying it can't be worse than yeah. it was. Now, would you say that the Joe Flacco experience was a success or a failure? I'd say, you know, Flacco, it was a good uh, – going away party for Flacco. I mean, I one think, and three. Yeah, I mean, I think it, that's just the cherry on top of his career. I don't know if he's going to sign him back up, but he just wants to be a backup, um, and he had to play a bigger role. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see Zach Wilson come back in. Zach Wilson, I think, has finally had enough time that now we can take him seriously and take his uh, performances like at their face value. How many games do you think Zach Wilson will play the rest of the season? All of them, hopefully. All of them, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was, uh, the way you said that was gonna, perfect. We're yeah, probably going to bench bench him for the last like two games. Yeah, right. When we, when we make the playoffs, yeah. And you just want to make sure he's healthy for them. Yeah, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Billy, if you wanted to go to that game, Jets Steelers, because you are a Jets fan. Yes. Can you do it on game time? Yes, you can. Okay. And that's a hot ticket, but thanks to game time, you can get it for seventy eight dollars. Nice. Wow, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And maybe you see Kenny Pickett coming in. I don't. Yeah. Feels like the Mitch train is slowing down. You think they're gonna put him in down. like in the middle of a game though? No, probably not. Probably not. It's just I'm sad for Mitch. I am. I'm very sad. He should have stayed the backup. I saw a tweet earlier that had a you know I'm sure it was completely unbiased, but it was just a compilation of good throws he had. Mm. Okay, that Mitch had. Yeah, who tweeted it? Uh, I don't know. It was just some Steelers person. It was like Mitch, but it was it was it was dropped catches. I, yeah, there have it was, been a few. It was the all twenty two. Like it was those. like if you look at that video, it's like Mitch is balling. Yeah. I, I like those. I like picking out like the selective great throws that were dropped. I do think that it it might be a little bit bigger of a problem than just Mitch. I think it might be the offensive line. It might be offensive coordinator. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the entire person the entire uh personality behind the Steelers offense. Which just it's painful to watch. I think they have the most boring offense in the league right now, actually. Yeah, yeah. I they have agree. some weapons. Um, they have a lot of weapons. Uh, next up, Bills Ravens. Shockingly, none of us picked this game, huh? You did. Uh, yeah. This memes is. We'll, we'll clean this up. I don't see it on memes is list. But you have. What do you have, Jake? Over fifty-one. Over I fifty-one. Took I took you the took bait. Took the bait. Because mm -hmm. how could you not? It's the Bills and the Ravens. Lamar and Josh Allen. I see it. Oh, PFT does as well. Over fifty-one. Okay. So you guys both – I'm just nervous about weather. That's all I'm nervous about. No, I just about. got yeah, baited. Yeah. I got baited. Yeah, you take the bait. And also, yeah. I think wind's not real when Josh Allen's playing in it. That's true. He can, Josh Allen can throw a ball through a tornado. And the Ravens' defense sucks. Yeah, the Ravens' defense, they're, they're really, really bad. Like, I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm considering using the word fraud. Mm. I think this Ravens' team might be fraudulent. 
Welcome to 2019, uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you went down that road, but I think I was right. I was proved very right. I think their that. defense is just that bad. I th- see. I actually don't know. They, I think they have to win, and uh, people have to hype them up before they can be fraud alert. Because I think people know their defense is bad. But their fraud not- would fraud would imply that people think their defense is better than it is. I think I'm I'm using the fraud word because I think before the season started, people were saying this Ravens team could make the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. I heard that from a lot of talking heads. Yeah, out there. yeah, yeah. Okay. You know how I feel about the talking heads. Okay. And okay. so I guess maybe I'm saying they're frauds and they don't watch the tape if they think that this defense is good enough to get them to Got the it. Super Bowl. Got it. But I have noticed one thing about the Ravens. I think, and I don't think this is just me being weird about it, their jerseys are brighter this year. Their mm. purple jerseys. Jay, can we get a Pantone check at some point to check the, the purple jerseys that the Ravens are wearing this year as opposed to what they've done in the past? I think it's actually a completely different purple. Hmm. Interesting. These are the hard hitting yeah. numbers that we got to get behind. I made a note. I made a note of that earlier, but yeah. I'm, I don't think I'm. I'm just making this up. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm excited for this game. This is gonna be a great game. Very very excited. Next up, we have a game that no one's excited for: the Chargers and the Texans. Max took the under here, forty four and a half. Max, what do you want to say about that? Just the game's going to suck, so just uh, take it. Yeah, shitty game. Chargers are b- banged up. Texans stink. Under. I, I like just being like, I don't want to watch this game, so I'm taking the under. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a fair. Anytime someone uses that as their uh, defense of a pick, it's a completely fair thing to do, in my opinion. I do, too. I think like what Hank said about that's the game that's going to have the sound on. I want points. Totally reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't. I feel like the I feel like the Chargers are gonna kill the Texans. It's one of those situations where everyone's like, "Oh, the Chargers." They're they're expecting what happened last week with the injured Chargers team to happen this week, but the Texans are probably really that bad. The Texans at are at, that bad at their best are like an injured Chargers team. Right. They feel like they are that bad. So um, we got some real stinker games. We have some. There's like three or four really really good ones, but the next one, the Panthers at the Cardinals, like. Or the Cardinals at the Panthers, like that's another one. Was like, what's going to happen here? Who the fuck knows? Yeah, and I, Billy and I have the Cardinals. I do yeah. like, <laughs> I do like this uniform matchup sneakily. I feel like the Panthers blue is going up against the the Cardinals like white and red trim. Yeah, I, I think mm. that that will be visually pleasing to have on a television without sound on it. Um, I do think though that uh, Matt Rule is good as fired. It's it's actually sad to watch him go through this season. Yeah, knowing that he's well, no. not going to be there. Remember, David Tepper said he was going to have patience. Yeah, he's going to have patience, so that means he won't probably get fired like in the month of October. Right, right, right. He's going to get fired though, very soon, shortly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy, I don't, I don't even know why I took the Cardinals. I was just like, I kept thinking about um, Kyler running around like a toddler with a phone, and I was just like, yeah, in one point, let's do it. I think I actually took the Panthers on like the Pro Football Football Show. I don't, I. That's one of those ones I. I was just like, yeah, maybe the Cardinals. I, sure. Just like Baker getting really, really angry for some reason and not playing well. I do. As a gambler, I do like the games where I truly think it is a coin flip. Mm-hmm. Like anyone who says they have a strong opinion either way is just lying. Because I feel like I have a better chance at that than doing research and trying to make an informed opinion about something. Are, are we counting this as a revenge game for Cliff Kingsbury or for Baker Mayfield? That's the important question because he, he left Texas Tech, right? I think it's for... Baker, right? I think because he didn't start him. It's tough to keep track of all of Baker's revenge games because yeah. he has so many beefs at once. But I feel like this might be a legitimate one. This is like Cliff Kingsbury almost took away his entire career when yes. he was in college. Yes. So now I actually like the Panthers in this game now. Okay. I mean, I can't. I'm not going to disagree. Yeah. Even though I have the Cardinals. I kind of. But I. That's I, how much of a coin flip I it feel, is. I feel like that's a good motivational. Like sometimes Baker's revenge games are completely made up in his own mind. This one might be more legitimate. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This one could have some some credence to it, although he just came off that week one revenge game that didn't go so well for him. That's true. Yeah. Um, okay. Next up, Patriots at Packers. Brian Hoyer time, 0-11 in his last 11 starts. Uh, the Patriots, Hank has them plus nine and a half. I made a grave mistake, but I'm sticking with it. You're jumping in that hole? I'm jumping in that hole. I thought it was throwback week. Oh, that's next week. Oh, that is a big, big mistake. I realized that after I submitted the pick, but oh, and eleven water always finds its level. He's not that bad. Yeah, is this? And it's it's nine and a half. Is this Brian or is this Axel? And the and and the Packers are not that good. Oh, I think Brian Hoyer is absolutely that bad. 
No. Without no. a doubt that bad. No. He has been in the league for so long. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, no, that's, no, that, that no, means that's he's good. good. He's no, good no, enough no, to no. stay in the league. No, no, no. Yeah. They, it gets to a point where it's like, dude, you're – how old is he? If you're in the league for that long and you're backing up Tom Brady, it's you're just there because you're a guy that can hang out with Tom Brady. Right. He likes having you around, and he's not threatened by you. Brian Hoyer, how old is he? He was on uh, – 36. 36. Yeah. What season is it? Fall. For him. He's about to be 37. He's going to be 37 in two weeks. That's old as shit. That is old as shit. Old so, as fuck. Yes. Really old. old fat old as fuck fat. and yeah, old as probably going to die soon. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what about last year when probably we, a great bowler when the, though when the punishment was driving across country and it really would have sucked for me with two kids i didn't complain i didn't complain either yeah you did no uh, i didn't okay. i made it okay. salient points mm-hmm. i am i did go off the handle and call you fat as fuck no you could that was too. a little bit aggressive no i didn't yeah no. you did you no. did no, i, I have the tape we'll check I just the said, tapes you said we'll I, I, the tapes. I think my best score is a 150 and then i pulled a proof of you saying 160 You're like, oh whatever yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, not that good of a bowler. I'm I'm gonna make an executive decision right now. We're not talking about the punishment anymore. Okay, okay great, great, great. That's awesome. On behalf of the listeners, hey, if, we gonna were, if we were gonna talk about it, I would say how excited he I am. You would complain. No, we're next not talking Next week about on that. PMT, yeah. PMTV. Next week on PMTV, you'll yeah. see the full thing. You'll see Hank complaining. No. Um, okay, <laughs> Broncos at Raiders. Uh, so, all right, so you're taking the Patriots here? Yeah. Okay. The Packers aren't that good. They're basically wearing the throwback jerseys. Brian Hoyer is due for a win. And someone had the under. They'll be in this uh, game? no, they won't be in the, the hungry dog because I'm not putting the Patriots in anymore. Uh, Billy had the under. Well, I That's in the same smart. thinking, I was like Buccaneers Packers was going to go over last week. I was like, well, this is a game that for some reason I thought would go over, but I think it's probably going to go under because of the defenses and no Mac Jones. Mm. Okay. Mm. I do. I like the under in this play. In this game, yeah. even though the slate looks bad going into it, these are the weekends that sneak up on us, and the games. I can almost guarantee you there are going to be some awesome games. Yeah, the only complaint I have is that this is the we're starting the three Sunday afternoon games. That's yeah. stupid. There should at least be four. Five would be the perfect number. Mm-hmm. But three is just – because if two of those games suck, you're just stuck. Uh, one more thing. I forgot to add this in about the Commanders. They're wearing their all-black uniforms for the first time ever. So I feel like On the that, road? Yeah, that might be a boost. Okay. That would have been a boost if it was a primetime game. Yeah, that's, if it was feel, under the lights, doesn't feel the same. Yeah, much no, you're, you're actually right. Like that's a waste. It's if a waste it's one it. o'clock, we're wearing black uniforms. They could somehow. Cru- they're so bad, they screw up all yeah. black uniforms, yeah. which is the e- it's like the biggest cheat code in football. Yeah, that's why New Zealand wins all the time in rugby. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, Broncos Raiders. Who's the better coach? <laughs> I was thinking about this. Uh, I is it, it is it Hackett? I think record-wise, yeah, percentage Yeah, but, like, just in vibes. I think it might be Hackett, I think who's it, been completely clowned his first three games. I think it – no, that's impossible to choose right now. See, the thing is with Hackett, I like Hackett as a person. I think he's a nice guy, and I liked interviewing him, and I think that he's, like, a genuine uh, – he's an easy person to root for. Josh McDaniels is an easy person to root against all yes. the time. Um, so I want to say Hackett, but – I don't know. I don't. I, I can't do it. I can't make a decision on those. It's the opposite of Sophie's choice. Shoot both of them. Yeah. Um, did you see that uh, Tyler Columbus, who used to play for the Broncos, I think he also played on the Lions, uh, tweeted a thread about Josh McDaniels' stories. I'll just share one or two of them. He said, after trading away the young nucleus of our offense, including Jay Cutler, Josh said to the entire team, fellas, don't worry about the QB situation. I can turn a high school QB into an all pro. Which nice. he tried to do. Which he tried to do. Which he tried to do. It didn't work. Um, he said, we had about 25 slogans painted on the walls. God forbid you forget what the slogan was above the door entering the cafeteria. Josh would call players out in team meeting and ask what each slogan said. If you forgot a single word, ass chewing. So that's just great. Like a NFL head coach just being like, you need to memorize these slogans. That's important. It also me. makes me wonder what Bill Belichick would think about the stuff that his disciples do when they right. go somewhere else. He would probably be like, that doesn't mean shit for winning football games. Right, right. Exactly. Like, you're so stupid. How did you miss all these points I made over the years? Yeah, like when I was telling you that you had to do all that stuff for me and memorize these slogans, that was me testing you to see if you were smart enough <laughs> to, to realize, realize how dumb it, is. it doesn't make yes, any sense. yes. Yes. Okay. So Broncos Raiders. None of us have this. The last one, um, Chiefs Bucks. So we got a lot of bets on this. I have the under. Uh, Max has the over. Hank has the Chiefs. Uh, did I miss anyone's picks? 
I think I, I again I'll do it better next time. I got it right before. So I think this I got everyone. This might be in Minnesota. This might be in Minnesota. No, they just they breaking moves two seconds ago. Uh, just announced it will be in Tampa. Okay. Ten minutes ago. I feel like that's a uh, that's a roll of the dice right there. So this is also the return of Tom Brady passes bedtime. So um, two and eight um, against the spread uh, when it's a night game, which I guess it was it would be one and eight up until he played the Cowboys and beat them and covered. And that's as a buck. Uh, that's in his last ten, and then his last ten uh, night games, the unders are seven and three. So he just gets okay. tired. Chiefs, gets I really like that. Tired. That's good I, for me. I do yeah. like the Chiefs in that. That's right. I'm I'm now a converted just primetime unders guy because it just like even if you lose, if you lose the under on a primetime game, you can at least say that was a fun game. Yeah. Whereas when it's a bad game and you always take the over in the primetime game, like I have done my entire life, it just Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays just end so poorly and so shittily. Yeah, um, the the whole Giselle thing has been back in the news recently. I feel kind of, I, I don't need to know if quarterbacks are getting divorced. Is that a controversial take? No, no. Like that's that feels like a pretty private thing that's going on in their personal lives. You know who is getting divorced? Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. Mc, it, no, Mackenzie oh. Scott. Both of them are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually Marjorie. If you're out is there, Mackenzie Scott, a boy or girl? That's uh, it's that's girl. Bezos's ex who married that science teacher. Oh, she's already getting divorced. Yeah, so she got a prenup. Yeah, who knows? This dude might get a bag. Wow, that'd be sick. That'd be the biggest high school Damn, teacher. About to hit her up. I, yeah, I'm about to hit up Marjorie Taylor Green. <laughs> MTG sup? Bonk. I know you're probably listening to the show right now. Yeah, yeah. just want to say, there. yeah, this this devil will go down to Georgia. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nice, nice. Did you tweet her sup? You should. I'll tweet her sup right now. <laughs> Right. I thought about doing it this morning, but then I was like, "Big Cat will bonk." Wait, me. wait, dibs on Mackenzie. I don't bonk you. I already, I already called. I don't those. have the list. I do. All right, let's do our Mount Rushmore. And we also have a, a hat parlay. Yeah. So the hat that went um, eight and zero last week, eight and zero on this, these two panels of the hat. We're gonna do the Bills. We're gonna do the bill of the hat. The teams are the Seahawks, the Jaguars, the Saints, the Chiefs, the Steelers, and the 49ers. We're gonna do those against the spread. It's mm. going to be against the spread because there's some rancid dogs in there. Okay. And so that's that's going to be the one this week. We'll get it up on the Barstool Sports Book. I love it. I love it. All right, Mount Rushmore. Uh, Hank, who's your pick? Uh, in, uh, in honor of our former co-worker, Taylor, Taylor Wan, taking Derrick Henry. Okay. okay. Rest in peace. He died, yep. Uh, Max and Billy and Jake, what's your pick? Chubb. Chubb. Good pick. Mm-hmm. PFT. I kind of want to do Josh Allen. Mm. I, all right, I'll do Lamar Jackson. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> all right, I like that. I like that. This is, this is the white hand, black hand meme. It is. <laughs> like, let's do it. Which one's the white hand? <laughs> we, we got this. Yep. We got this. Okay, uh, let's get to Frankie Lasagna, and then we have Billy Eichner after Frankie Lasagna. Who? Frankie Lasagna is being brought to you by our great friends over at Curve. It's football season. That means that you're buying beer, snacks, maybe even a new couch for the most premium football watching experience. Whatever it is you're buying, if you're using a card for any purchase, big or small, you need Curve. Curve combines your entire wallet into a single card and app. With Curve, you upload your cards into the Curve app. Then when you use Curve, you can swipe and indicate which card you want to use. Or you can assign your card for certain purchases with the Smart Rules feature. Maybe you want a specific card to cover anything over 100 bucks, while a different, more rewarding card can pay for groceries. It's easy. Just set it and forget it. Curve also gives you additional cash back on top of any rewards that you're already earning on your other credit cards and your debit cards. So make sure to go to Curve.com slash Barstool to receive 20 bucks in Curve cash once you've downloaded the app, opened an account, and made a first transaction. This is a great idea. This is a fantastic idea. I'm downloading Curve. I'm going to Curve.com slash Barstool. I'm going to receive 20 bucks in Curve cash once I download that app, open the account, and make a first transaction. Terms and conditions apply. Now here's Frankie Lasagna. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is Frankie Lasagna, uh, who went viral on Wednesday night when Aaron Judge hit his 61st home run in the Rogers Center in Toronto. Frankie Lasagna was uh, one of the fans that was very close to the ball. Now, Frankie, thank you for joining us. Um, so to set the stage, we do a, a weekly thing in the football season called Fantasy Fuckboys. And we come up with fake names, 
and we've come up with it's usually just Italian stereotypes. So it's like Tony roast beef or uh, you know Tony bologna. Yeah, I think we've done Freddy fettuccine. Yeah, Giuseppe pizza, whatever. So you your actual name is Frankie Lasagna, though. That's well. Um, officially, it's Francesco Lasagna. Okay, even better. Yeah, even perfect. better. Okay. So um, we we saw your name. We're like, we got to get this guy on. We got to hear his story uh, about the ball uh, yeah. and also just as living as Frankie Lasagna. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'll we'll start with yesterday. Um, so uh, me and my uh, my good buddy, Larry, um, known him for a long time, and uh, he's a big Yankee fan. So every year we try to go at least one game. So I uh, look on StubHub and uh, I'm like, hey, you know, we're, we're approaching Judge's milestone. You know, we could be lucky and it could be that day. Uh, I own a restaurant and um, I'm closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, but I'm open on Wednesday. So I decided to go on Wednesday so that I didn't uh, uh, leave my wife alone with my two kids for a fifth day of the week. So I'm trying to be nice in that way. And uh, so we decided to go Wednesday. And I uh, looked online and I like, made sure I filtered out all the seats just to the outfield, left field, uh, and row one. Has to be row one. Uh, saw row one, uh, 150 bucks, jumped on them right away. I think it was the fourth at bat. And, uh, and um, you're ready, or you're getting ready like every player on the field, anticipating every pitch. And then, boom, he hits it. And then you hear, oh, oh, everyone stands up. Uh, instincts kind of take over and I, I, I think I, I elbowed my buddy Larry in the neck <laughs> and uh, and reached and it was like it was over so fast and then just next thing you know it's bouncing in the bullpen and, and the disbelief comes like oh my god it was within a foot of me yeah it, you were close to it but I feel like there was another guy that was a little bit closer that has to be kicking himself it, was, it, it went off his glove if you can find a slow-mo it tipped his glove and I was just like a foot you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little taller than him. I Maybe I would have had a better chance at the first base one glove, too. Not to say I would have caught it, mm -hmm. but, oh, my God. What are the odds? I what think the odds? You, were, you were being polite. You didn't reach over into his space. You didn't want to encroach on, on his territory a little bit. And yeah, he... I definitely, I definitely I, there was a daughter, uh, a son and a daughter to our right and my buddy. So I, I, I kind of jumped over all three of them <laughs> yeah. and gave it my best effort. Like, I, I wasn't... Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't miss it for not trying. That's for sure. So a after that happens, what's the conversation like in your section uh, after you see the ball fall down? You know, as that inning comes to an end and as the game goes on, are you guys just sitting there in disbelief, like, "Oh man, I almost had it." No, I almost had it. It, it was. It was very surreal. In, in the moment, it, it uh, everyone in that section was like in utter disbelief and shock. Like it was like almost like something happened like in the world, like something crazy in the world happened and everyone was in just in disbelief for like 30 seconds. And then, then you kind of kick back in and you, everyone started clapping and celebrating for Aaron judge. And then it comes back and you're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And like, it was right there. It's like, could I have had it? You, you second guess. You're like, could, could I, have, could, what, maybe how hard would I have got if I jumped over? <laughs> yeah. Could you think you could have had it? Cause I think you could have had it. Ah, possibly. I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people say it was a little bit too low, but I, I you know what? I, I say, let's do it again. Give me another chance, Aaron, and uh, let's see if I can catch you <laughs> and tries. You've got to be rooting now for Aaron Judge to hit like five more home runs, right? Because if it lands, if he doesn't hit another home run, that's a then that, the, that, ball, that ball becomes a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that ball becomes the the last home run he hit in the regular season yeah. this year. Um, that that would kill you even extra, I'd assume. Uh, to be honest, like I'm not, I wasn't more like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit of a cool, cool chunk of money. I guess you can say if you really got the month, the, the full value for it, but, um, the story, I'm, I'm loving the, the story and just being like in that moment and having a chance and being made fun of on the, on, in, on the online. It's, it's, I'm loving it. Yeah. You got to witness baseball history too. So I got to ask you, Frankie Lasagna, what kind uh, of restaurant do you run? Uh, Asian. <laughs> that would be so funny if you did do that frankie lasagna's walk kitchen <laughs> yeah oh uh uh it's italian uh mm -hmm. uh pizza pasta um after COVID, i had to alter my menu and and remove stuff from my grill i used to i used to have steak lamb salmon uh chicken um 
I brought back my uh, my dad's burger. My my father had a restaurant in the same building as my restaurant was 35 he, years ago. Was he Frankie Lasagna as well? Uh, Phil Lasagna. His father is Francesco Lasagna. Okay. So do you have any kids? I do. My daughter is named Frankie Lasagna, believe it or not. <laughs> and my son is Lincoln. Lincoln Lasagna. I love that. <laughs> That's a great name. It's like a link, like the log cabins that you make as a kid, except you make them out of noodles. It was it like awesome growing up being Frankie Lasagna? I'd imagine it's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I haven't ever, I haven't ever uh, hated it. Um, I'm sure I was teased as a kid, um, but I, I was always the Joker and always having fun as a kid. Still to this day, I'm, I'm a big Joker, but uh, never, never once did I ever feel like my name was like again using against me. It's. Uh, Got me out a couple of speeding tickets. Um, yeah, it makes for makes for a good conversation. And uh, no, I've never, never not liked it. Yeah, everybody yeah. likes lasagna. That's that's a good thing. If you hear lasagna, yeah. you just get happy on the inside. So uh, you're Blue Jays, you're a big Blue Jays fan. Uh, how confident yep. are we? We think we, we, do they have a shot. Yeah, for sure. We got a shot now. Uh, uh, looks like we're going to probably end up playing Tampa. Um, uh Home field advantage would be would be huge for sure. There was uh, there was the talk that if the Jays did get home field advantage with the border and the COVID restrictions, some of the players wouldn't they be able to travel. Right. But I think that's going to be wiped very soon, and they will be allowed to play. I think the government should hold off just until the playoffs are over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I had one last question. If you had caught the ball, what would you have done? And now this is a tricky question because we, I think you need to answer it um, one way to start, and then we could do hypotheticals after. But this is – you still have a chance to get some goodwill here. So what, what would you have done with the ball? I would, uh, I would have uh, definitely held on to it or kept it and uh tried to get judge to come to the restaurant and uh cook for him and, and then uh you know i like judge so okay uh, so that was incorrect um what you need to do because you didn't actually catch the ball like i would go out in front of everyone and be like if i had caught the ball i would have given it right back to judge it's judge's ball he did all the hard work i want him and the maris family to be happy with the ball it would have been my pleasure to hand it back for no all i'd want maybe is just a good old-fashioned handshake knowing that if you actually caught the ball, you'd want money. So that's what you got to start doing. If you do any more interviews, pretend you're like the nicest guy in the world and be like, all I'd want is a pat on the back from Judge and be like, great catch, fella. Well, yeah, I guess. I guess I could say that. But, uh, you know, cooking for him would be extra. Yeah, extra. yeah. Or, or just say that you would take – Take the ball, auction it off, and give all the money to charity. Mm -hmm. And you would hope that Aaron Judge would match. And I would have matched that. I, I, I would have matched your charity donation. I, I would have doubled Big Cats and mm -hmm. matched. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll think. Uh, I'll, I'll take that to uh, my next interview. Okay. I'm doing uh, more, a couple more, and uh, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, could you in your next interview could you be like, I just talked to the part of my take guys. I would have given the ball to charity. I would have sold it for charity, and they actually said they would have matched. So it's too bad I didn't catch it. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Perfect. We want some credit here because, like, if you had, I actually would have. I would have. Yeah. I definitely would have. For sure. No question. Right, I, in my loved, mind. I, I love. I love charity. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah I got a. I got a, a couple. I can plug. plug. Okay. okay. All right. Good. 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 Um. Well, Frankie Lasagna. I mean, I just like saying your name. I just want to be friends with you because it just be great. Yeah, like, be friends. your friends have to be like having a Frankie Lasagna in your crew is that's a great move. Yeah, my friends would way de definitely be way less cooler if I wasn't around life. That's for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, sorry you aren't good at catching baseballs. Maybe yeah, well, it was yeah. a hockey puck. My hands, yeah, my hands are better for uh, making noodles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Frankie. Appreciate it. Likewise, thank you. Thanks for having me. Frankie Lasagna is brought to you by Game Time, created by fans for fans. Game Time is a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets, sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, you don't know what you're missing. You guys are going to love this app. We've had lots of Barstool fans using it, hitting us up on social, talking about the great deals that they're getting. I've been using Game Time all year. I went to go see The Interrupters. I went to go see Sum 41 this summer at the Stone Pony. 
I've been going to baseball games, went to a Mets game, went to some Caps Rangers games last year. We've been getting into all these games using game time. I know some people here went to the Tennessee game on Saturday using game time to get them in the door. Very tough t- ticket to get. Our friends at game time got us in. They've got the most amazing deals. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the United States. You're going to love it. It's got the cleanest user interface. If you're looking for last minute tickets, open up the game time app. It's so easy to find. You will absolutely love it. Download the app, go to the account tab, create your login and redeem code PMT for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And now here's Billy Eichner. Okay. We now welcome on a very special guest, incredibly talented actor, producer, writer, it is Billy Eichner. He has a new movie out uh, that he co-wrote, executive produced, and stars in called Bros. Uh, I guess the first question is, like, that that feels like a lot for one movie. Are you a little nervous? Because essentially it's <laughs> like, do you like Billy or not in, in this movie? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you're probably going to not love it if you hate me, um, <laughs> which was our original tagline for the poster. Um, but I, I should say, I, I, first of all, thank you for having me. And um, I did contribute a lot to the movie, but I did not do it alone. Um, Bros is uh, produced by Judd Apatow, uh, who's made some of the funniest movies of the last 20 years, Bridesmaids and Superbad and 40-Year-Old Virgin and knocked up and you know and, it, and i co-wrote it with nick stoller and he directed it nick made neighbors and forgetting sarah marshall and you know these guys really coached me through this process and they really know how to make a really fucking funny laugh out loud movie and so i yes i contributed a lot i do star in it um but they it, this was a real collaboration between all three of us that's smart so if you don't like it it's judd's fault yeah, what I'm here. I'm bl- blame Judd Apatow. All right. OK, <laughs> don't blame me. All right. It's my first movie. <laughs> the other thing about this movie is so it's the first ever movie. I, I think I have this correct. That has the entire cast is LGBTQ straight and gay roles. Yeah. So it's um, one of, if not the first uh, gay romantic comedy. We actually sort of call it a, you know, they say rom com. The emphasis here is a bit more on comedy. So we call it a com rom. But um it's the first of its kind um produced by a major studio universal about a gay couple and uh, two gay guys and the entire cast it's all openly lgbtq actors and actresses even in the straight character even playing the straight characters um so it's a first um in that way um and you know it's cool it's fresh it's new it's exciting it really is like uh, you know, a Judd Apatow movie, but, you know, finally one that happens to be about a gay couple, which we've never gotten before. But, you know, it's really just an R-rated good time at the movie theater. You know, it's really funny and it's exciting and we're very proud of it. So as straight men, should we be offended that you stole parts from us? Because, like, I was going to be in this movie, I'd assume, and then, <laughs> boom, I'm well, not. I don't think you should be offended because, you know... <laughs> Uh, historically, straight guys have often gotten to play a lot of the best gay roles. Yeah, you know, you, you they understand. win Oscars for them. Yeah, this is like the know. first time that we get to be offended yeah. by this. No, so I really want to. Yeah, I want to take it. You took a job from me. The, yeah, for the first time, you guys are the marginalized group. <laughs> this is so fucked that's up. Great. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah someone will you a real reason to complain here. I love it. Someone will have that take. You know that. Like some idiot is going to say something like that, and it's going to be hilarious to watch them try to do the mental gymnastics, being like, "How could they do this?" Yeah, I mean, well, on Twitter, you'll get every take <laughs> imaginable, <laughs> and that's fine. But you know, the funny thing is, you know, there are all these historic statistics attached to the movie, and and those are great. Those are important to acknowledge. You know that this is a movie that's taken a really long time to get made. And, and it is a big deal that a studio like Universal, the same studio that makes Jurassic World and Fast and the Furious and Minions and all these big global franchises also made an R-rated comedy about two gay guys, you know? And it just, it just hasn't happened very often. And that's very cool. At the same time, when Nick and Judd and I sat down to write it, we never thought, all right, let's write a historic movie or, you know, we just thought let's write a really fucking funny movie. You know, like we don't get many great comedies these days. And 
I think people have forgotten how much fun it is to go to a movie theater and laugh with your friends and sit in the dark and eat snacks and laugh your ass off and escape our fucking bleak world for a couple of hours and actually watch something that makes you feel really good. Yep. And also the air conditioning in the summertime. That's a big one for me too. Just I cool love off air conditioning. And here's the great thing. You can still check your phone. That's the <laughs> that's the best thing. That's the best part of all. You can still check your phone. Just don't annoy the people sitting around you. Yeah. So, so I guess I'm curious because it never occurred to me that uh, there had never been like a major studio funding a, a, a romantic comedy about two gay main characters. Um, what's one thing that I guess, I guess for lack of a better term, straight movies that they get wrong about gay culture when they have, uh, gay characters as side characters or like, you know, the neighbor or something like that. What's something that, that they've gotten wrong traditionally that you guys have switched up in this movie? Well, I don't know if they've gotten anything wrong necessarily. It's just that we never really get to be the center of the story. And I think for that reason, you know, we've had a ton of test screenings of bros at multiplexes all over the country for months since March. You know, um, we haven't had our official premiere yet. But when you do a studio movie like this, they make you test it a million times in front of all different types of audiences, straight, gay, everything. And, you know, what you realize is one of the things straight people love about the movie is that in addition to it being really funny, I hope it is a peek behind the curtain at a culture that you think you know about from like the random gay characters you've seen on sitcoms, but you don't really know because it's very rare that we get to be honest about it, you know, and, and get to be the center of the story and really dive into it. And, you know, it's so funny, you know, we, um, I sat, I sat in on a focus group they did. And uh, one of the straight guys in the audience, they asked him, you know, about the movie and, you know, there's like this really funny, uh, sex scene in the movie and they were like what did you think of that and he said you know he was like I, I kind of felt like I was watching jackass like you know <laughs> I was a little uncomfortable but it was so fucking funny I didn't care it was just hilarious and I actually thought that was amazing you know like a great comparison you know like what's the difference if it's two gay guys rolling around in bed you know or if it's Sasha Baron Cohen and Borat rolling around in bed with that guy you know like it's just funny, you right. know, and so this is a this is a rare chance for for people like me, even like a gay comedian, to like star in a movie and 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 really get to really get to show what our lives are about in a funny way. If anyone compares you to Jackass, that's like the highest compliment you can get. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm the gay Johnny Knoxville over here. That's huge. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah. can, can we talk a uh, Billy on the street? Obviously, how you got your start is yeah. so incredible i so you know i've done some man on the street and not anywhere near what you've done but i also have done enough to know it is probably the hardest thing to do when like creating content um how hard is it when you like because you everything seems so effortless for you but were there days when you're trying to test it out and starting it where it's like fuck we can't get any great moments here Oh my God, so many days like that. It, it like It's one of those things where unless you've done it and you guys have done it, you know, you don't realize how hard it is to do. And we've had so many big stars on the show and so many really talented, gifted people. I mean, everyone from like Chris Evans, Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, Chris Pratt, Michelle Obama. I mean, we've had so many people and yet they come and an hour in they're like, whoa right this is a lot like you are improvising every second with strangers you are running around you're dealing with the people you're dealing with the streets of new york you have my guy my camera guys my incredible camera crew have been with me now for years they are running with cameras on their shoulders sometimes running backwards <laughs> in order to get me in the right angle like it's completely insane and the degree of difficulty is very very high yeah um and as the show got more popular and and successful there's also a standard you're looking to meet you know like and, and that character when that i'm in that persona when i'm on the street is so intense i can't drop it you know if i drop it i'm not the guy anymore you know yeah. so it's not one of those things you can just phone in so you know it's that it's it's a tough one but it's also why i'm here it's also why bros got made it's it's why i have everything 
that followed. And um, I'm really proud of it. You know, it, the people who love Billy on the street really love it. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, that makes me happy. Yeah. So have you ever been on the streeted? Has there ever been a guy that comes up to you and, and tries to get you and their man on the street? I'm trying to think. I probably wouldn't be nice about it is the sad irony. I'd probably be like, get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. You're annoying. Yeah, you'd be like, I, I fucking invented you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now, yeah, now I feel bad because Billy on the Street got very popular on TikTok. I mean, it, it wasn't even me originally posting the clips. It was just fans of the show. And that led to a lot of other man on the street stuff on TikTok because like you said, everyone thinks they can just go out yeah. and do it. And it's just going to be funny when it takes a lot more work than that. Yeah. But um, so I do feel a little bad about all the copycats running around New York. But yeah. Are, are there whatever. actually people that, that think that you invented man on the street? Maybe young people, but I definitely did not invent Man on the Street. I mean, my biggest inspiration for it was was Letterman. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm old and I grew up watching Letterman. I mean, I, when I was a kid, my parents would, for some reason, would, would let me stay up and watch Letterman when he was on at 1230, when he followed Johnny Carson, when he was like really edgy and subversive and doing all this shit on the streets of New York. And I, even as like a child, I don't know, I was so drawn to it. And I also, I grew up in New York City. I'm a native New Yorker. I grew up in Queens. I went to high school in Manhattan. I I love New York so much. It's like my favorite place. And so um, I love being out there, you know, even though it's tiring and all that. I love New Yorkers. And Billy on the Street is really, I bring to it what I can, but it's really about the people I talk to. And you don't find it anywhere else. And, but no, I certainly didn't invent it. You know, I, my biggest inspiration personally was, was David Letterman um, and what he did, although it even predates him. I think, you know, you had talk show hosts like Jack Parr way back in the day doing a version of it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, what, what's the closest you came to like either getting in a fight or someone just like losing it on you? Yeah, a couple of times. Um, but I mean, considering how many people I've spoken to over the years, it's remarkable how few times that's happened. Yeah. Uh, but once an older lady, I think we found out maybe she was a nun, although she wasn't. She was not dressed as a nun at the time. Um, but she slapped me across the face. This was years <laughs> ago, really hard. This was like in my YouTube days. Um, and I, I asked her some question about sex or something, and she just really slapped me across the face. I mean, she can't um, hold you that stand. She was off duty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Look, she was doing her job and I was doing mine. <laughs> um, but, but, and then, you know, there have been some guys over the years who, uh, who start, who start up with me a little bit. You know, I kind of do like, I like to have fun with straight guys sometimes. Like, you know, I like to like, you know, give the, you know, make it a little awkward about like sex and stuff. And like, there was one sketch we did where I was just walking up to pee. I was dressed as a chipmunk um, and it was to promote, it was, I was pretending to promote one of the chipmunks movies, which I was not in, but I was saying I was promoting that. And I was dressed as a chipmunk and I went around just trying to make out with people, anyone, men, women, anyone and i was actually surprised by the amount of people who allowed me to kiss them um uh, and one but one guy did not like it one i mean i didn't kiss him i just like approach it i was i were and he like put up his fists and like yeah he didn't like that yeah so with those people one thing that you're really good at that uh a lot of people especially around this office admire is you get people to sign releases even after yeah. they look they do stuff that might make them look really bad what's your secret to getting somebody to sign a release? It definitely got easier over the years um, because we could, I mean, the, the, the show got really popular and we could pull up clips online on someone's iPhone. You know, I have a bunch of producers and production assistants, God bless them, who follow me around. And after I speak to someone, we'll run up to them and say, hey, we need, do you mind signing this? And he's a comedian and it's a show. And, you know, sometimes when people hesitate, they could go on YouTube and be like, no, 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 it's just an act. Here he is with Tina Fey or here he is with Will Ferrell. Like, you know, this guy's legit. And, you know, people, people end up, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people end up saying, oh, all right, I get it. It's like a bit. All right, here you go. You know, mm -hmm. whatever. Was, did you um, ever, New Yorkers tend to be cool that way. Did you ever lose out on like gold? Cause that would kill me. 
if you're like, I, you know, you you hit just gold with someone, they're like, nope, not signing the release. Luckily, it hasn't happened often to the point where I remember it, but it's definitely happened a handful of times. Um, and, you know, but it's a numbers game. It kills you, but you've got to move on, you know, like you, you got to keep going. And I, also, I would never blame someone for not signing the release. Yeah. Like, I, I totally get it, you know, um, so... I might be disappointed, but I obviously see where they're coming from. And, um, you know, that can be frustrating, but I don't know. You just move on and you're like, fuck it. Go to the next person. Have you thought about like your career's so fascinating. I, did I read it correctly that you got, uh, your part on parks and rec through a DM Twitter DM. That is a hundred percent accurate. That's yeah, crazy. I, I was doing Billy on the street and, and starting to get known for that online and on social media. Um, it, it was a TV series, but we would pull the clips from it and put it online. And that's where it really took off. And Mike Schur, who's a TV writing, producing genius who made Parks and Rec and The Good Place and a lot of wonderful shows. He he DM'd me out of nowhere on Twitter. This is probably going back to 2012 or something, maybe 2013, something like that. And he said, hey, Billy, it's Mike Schur. We're all big fans of yours and Billy on the street at Parks and Rec. I think we have a part for you on the show. Um, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, crazy. I have agents and managers and lawyers and all these people. And I ultimately ended up getting the first scripted show I'd ever done as you know, from a DM on Twitter. That's, that's that guy's uh, insanely talented too. Yeah. The stuff that he's produced, and I think he's actually one of the first sports bloggers. Yeah, and tremendous. He yeah. started Fire Joe Morgan and invented sports blogging. Yeah. He's, he's Mike. Mike is incredible. And um, really, I never I was so I was just thinking about this the other day. I was so green when I did Parks and Rec. I had I'd been doing Billy on the Street, but that's not like other shows. You know, it's improvised. It's not scripted. You're not on a set. Parks and Rec was the first time I was ever really on a set saying scripted lines. I mean, I went to theater school. I was an actor. But then Billy on the Street is what I had been doing for years. And I had never been on a TV set. I remember, I remember the first day, I didn't even realize there were takes where the camera wasn't on you. I mean, like there were very basic things I did not understand. I didn't admit it at the time. I just acted like I knew what was happening. And eventually I, I picked up on it. But yeah, that was an amazing experience. And um, those actors were really incredible. It's such a, such a great show. So have you had the thought of like what your life would look like without the internet? Because we have the same thing where it's like if the internet didn't exist... We wouldn't be sitting here. We wouldn't have a podcast. We wouldn't have like, have you, have you played out the Billy Eichner's life without the internet and your ability to make a career based on a man on the street, you know, series? Yeah. I don't think I would have a career without the internet. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, you never know. Maybe I would have strolled into an audition and booked something, but that's never how I got things. I was always very bad at auditioning or even when I was good, it just wouldn't lead anywhere. You know, people just didn't know what to do with me. I was a very outside the box character, especially when I started out over 20 years ago in comedy in New York, you know, it was a different time. Right. Yeah, uh, I feel like back, back in those days, it was a lot harder to break in. You almost had to know somebody or be related to somebody to get your foot in the door because there were very few jobs in comedy on television as, as opposed to now where it seems like, you know, if, if you do have the internet, like everybody does, and if you're a, a content creator, you can kind of make it happen for yourself and at least see if it works. Absolutely. I mean, that's what happened for me. You know, I, there were a lot of executives and agents and things who would come to my live show in New York, which is where the Billy on the street video started. I had a whole live show and the Billy on the street video started before YouTube about a year before YouTube even existed because I'm older than I look, but, you know, and we would show those videos on a screen and people would fall out laughing. I mean, they would love it the way they love it today, but I didn't have the internet to prove to the industry, the entertainment industry, that I would have fans everywhere, that I would have, that it wasn't just a New York thing or a gay thing or this or that, you know, that, that this is something everyone would love, but I was very unique and I had my own take on it on, on the street and I was loud. I was really bold. I was very unapologetic about everything about who I am. And, you know, for 20 years ago, that was a lot for people. And, and, and even when they liked me, they didn't quite know what to do with me um, or they were scared, you know, and I needed the internet so that I could control it 
so that I could say, look, guys, like this video has millions of views. OK, like there's an audience for me out there and you're underestimating that. And that's what it took. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you ever considered uh, selling out and going with a cordless microphone? Mm, absolutely not. And um, I I know, like, I mean, we still use this, like, we don't do it as much anymore at Billy on the Street, but, like, we always use the, the mic with the wire, which at the beginning, I swear to you, the only reason we used it is because I had no money, mm -hmm. and we went to Radio Shack, and that was the cheapest mic that you could get. And so we used it, but then it ended up kind of becoming part of it because I'm literally attached to the A-cam, one of the cameras, um, and you can see it in the shot and it helps like build tension, you know, and it yep. keeps us connected to each other and it just became part of it. So I, I, that's interesting that you say that because I feel the same way when I'm watching it, that when that camera comes into the shot that you're connected to, it highlights the absurdity of the situation where you're tied to a guy and you're screaming into somebody's face for somebody holding this black box that's pointed at you. And you get to yeah. see like for a split second, how absurd the entire situation is. And it actually does make it funny. So I'm glad to hear that. Never sell out, yeah. never change. I'm never buying a wireless mic. Never. Love it, it. It's part of it. Um, you mentioned you like to, you know, like kind of poke it at straight guys. And I, you probably don't remember this tweet, but I, I was looking through, you know, doing some research for this interview and you had a tweet in uh -oh. 2012 that just says <laughs> picture of a football and it's a picture of a football and I just – I don't know if you know, but that was so genius because we literally do that all the time where we just post pictures of footballs. Oh, yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Yes. I, no, every Sunday yes. every Sunday morning during football season, I post a picture of – I, I literally you, do that you tweet. Just, you just – you that, nailed it. You my, nailed hey, it. Hey, listen, my culture is not your costume, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> I'm sorry that I appropriated part of my take culture. I am sorry. You can cancel me, yeah. you know, and um, – I'll, I'm listening and I'm learning, as but, the kids say. But, but um, you nailed it. It was 2012, and you're just like, yeah, dudes are probably just posting pictures of footballs. It's like, yeah, we are. Yeah, I do yeah. that all the time. I, 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 I love that. You know, that's great. And that's kind of like in my movie in Bros, we kind of play around with that. I mean, I'm playing a character like myself, but I fall for a guy who's like a bro. I mean, he's gay, but he's like this, like, you know, bro jock type of guy, and we're really opposites in that way. And, um, you know, that that lends itself to a lot of comedy and a lot of funny, absurd situations. Absolutely. All right. I, I have another question that you pr I, I I'm going to guess you haven't gotten asked this question. Um, can you bring back? Uh -oh. Do you have the power to bring back friends from college? I loved that show and it left Thank on a you. fucking cliffhanger and I'm so mad. I know. And, you know, I hear that all the time about friends from college because um, we only got to do two seasons of it. Sadly, that that's Netflix's call to make. But, you know, what's what's cool is that Friends from College is where I met Nick Stoller um, and Friends from College led directly to bros. I mean, I worked I had a couple of scenes in the sequel to Neighbors, which Nick directed. Um, and then Nick put me in Friends from College and he loved working with me. And he sent me an email in between seasons one and two of friends from college the first and the last season of yep. friends from college um nick sent me an email and said hey I, I really love working with you i think you have a lot of potential beyond billy on the street and i want my next movie to be a romantic comedy but i think it would be cool if it was about a gay couple because we've never seen many of those and judd apatow was really interested in that too and so that directly came out of Friends from College. So sadly, we didn't get to do more of that show, but we got to work together. Again. Okay, so that makes me feel a little better that this is kind of you know uh, born from Friends from College. I just hate whenever, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, there's shows that you you love, and then and you like kind of like, oh man, I, this is a great show. I can't wait for another season, and it's just like, oh, it's gone forever. Yeah, Friends from College is interesting, you know, because it is one of those things where people come up to me all the time and talk about, it, or they tweet at me, or send me messages saying oh make another season of that show but there are a lot of shows out there and also that show started at a very strange time if you remember it was the first not to get political but it was the first summer um that trump was president and everything in the air was very heavy and very political and friends from college came along as just the show about like friends cheating on each other and sleeping together and it it, it felt a bit removed from what was happening in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like, it didn't feel topical. And I think maybe that affected how critics saw it. 
Um, but I think people out there really loved it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll have to check it out. I haven't gotten Big Cat used to always tell me. Well, like, yeah, Michael Keegan K uh, was on the show, and I asked him the same thing. I was like, bring it back. So I'm just, I think at this point, I'm just going to try to get everyone who is on the show on this show, and eventually <laughs> maybe I can incept everyone to be like, yeah, let's bring it back. Yeah, well, Stoller and I had a great time on that, and um, it, it led directly to Bro. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, nice, nice. So, um, uh, the character that you play in Billy on the Street. It's kind of I was I was thinking about it a little bit today. It's not far off from kind of how Big Cat and I look at ourselves in terms of sports, where you care so deeply about pop culture and about movies and yep. things like that. Your character is over the top caring, but it's because there's there's like a kernel of truth that you yourself actually do care a lot about. That's how we feel about sports, where we make fun of ourselves for caring this much about sports, even though we do a little bit. So as as a pop culture expert yourself can you tell us how we should feel about the harry styles mm. chris pine thing um oh boy please yeah i educate don't know us. people are spitting on each other i'm like wow you think bros is gay harry styles <laughs> is spitting on chris pine all right <laughs> that's just gay um uh, i don't yeah apparently, well i just saw right before the interview that um i guess someone's one of their publicists came out and said he didn't spit on chris pine I don't know. I it's it's tough for me. I, it's a hard hard call for me to make. I did watch the video. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Th that movie is just a lot of drama. Right? Yeah. yeah. Is it? <laughs> so when I first saw this drama coming out about, it, I was like, is this is this just a work? Are they trying to get us to go see the movie by talking about it? But then it seems like they really hate each other. So I'm not sure how effective yeah. that marketing strategy is going to be. So, I don't know. It's very old school in a way, you know, I don't know. It's, um, uh, I mean, it's kind of, I'm sure it's not fun for them. I don't know, but, uh, it's been a minute since we've had like the, a big kind of fun Hollywood, <laughs> like drama, you know, we were dealing with like COVID and all this serious political stuff for like years, you know, and I think people find it sort of fun to not think about something that heavy. Yeah. Um, I like and, the slap. Uh, the slap was great. It brought America together for an evening. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I know the spit is the new slap. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how it all pans out. You know, I'm I'm pulling for everyone, as always. So with bros, obviously, you've reached a point in your career. Like, I'm sure that if you told yourself this 15 years ago, you'd be like, no way would I be doing this. What's what's like the next big thing? What is the because I mean, it's it is kind of mind blowing, I'm sure, for you that you're you're the lead in this movie that you helped write and executive produce. Is there another, is there another thing you, are you going to be like a Marvel character or something? Like what's the, <laughs> what's the big thing that you got to knock off after this? I don't know. I mean, it's funny because these days, like you have any success and then people are like, so next you're going to do a Marvel movie. Right, right. right. <laughs> like that is like the thing we're all supposed to be working towards. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, this, I have no Marvel movies are great. They're obviously very popular. I don't know. I'm a comedy guy. You know, like I like being funny and I actually like playing real people. You know, I think Billy on the street, which I love, of course, but it, it was a cartoon character. It is a cartoon character, essentially, like come to life. That's always how I thought about it. Um, and, uh, you know, Letterman was a huge inspiration for it. But so so was Pee Wee Herman, who I grew up really loving. Yeah, me too. Um, and if you know if you know Pee Wee and you watch Billy on the street, you'll see what I mean. Yep. Um, and, and he was very silly, but also very subversive, like a lot, there's a lot that's happening there that's similar. So I, I've, I've played these cartoon characters. And so like one of the great things about bros and why I was so excited to do it is because I get to, I still get to be really funny, but I also get to be an actual human being, mm -hmm. you know, with like feelings and, you know, a complicated life and, you know, something that's really relatable, to people while still being funny, relatable to straight people and gay people and everyone. But it's, you know, we don't get that many movies about like actual people anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, every, everything is like a superhero movie or a franchise movie or a horror movie. And those are great. There's nothing wrong with those movies. But when I was growing up, there was a lot more variety in terms of what was playing at the movie theater. And so, you know, uh, again, that's why I was excited to make, make bros because I think that, you know, comedies, something that makes you laugh out loud is just as important as like a dark, gritty, 
as a dark gritty superhero movie. And again, there's nothing wrong with those movies. I love those movies. I go see those movies, but they're not the only types of movies to be made. Right. Uh, and so I, I like comedies. And so, you know, for the time being, I'll probably stick to that. Yeah. Okay. But this is the start of it. You're going to do, you know, a nice little four movie run. Yeah. And then you're going to get an eight pack. And then you're going to get on all the, H, all the yep. HGH and you're going to be like, no, I'm just changing my diet and I got to, I got to live in <laughs> chef. So that's, that's how come I've got exactly. all these muscles everywhere. Then you'll be, by the in- way, I didn't say, I didn't say I don't want HGH. So I, I didn't say that. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shoot me up with whatever. Yeah. yeah. As long as whatever, as long as it doesn't kill me, I'll take, I'll take all the steroids. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, eventually you'll get there. You'll get yeah. to a place where you're bored with making, you know, movies about real people. And you're like, I want to be a comic book character. Uh, but in, yeah. th- in this movie, you talked about the sex scene in it. Is that weird? Like, is y- your first starring role? I've always just heard how awkward sex scenes are in general to film because you've got everybody around you. You have to pretend like you're having fun, but you're not. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And this one is not, this one's really there for comedic purposes, you know, like, you know, like I said, we made the movie with Judd Apatow and, and Nick and, you know, we were thinking about scenes like the scene in Bridesmaids where they all go to the wedding shop and they all get like diarrhea, you know, like these like explosively funny physical comedy scenes or in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, that first scene where Jason Siegel is naked the whole time um, and just like arguing with his girlfriend, you know, so we were we were trying to capture like our version of that, like something that was really physical and funny and a little shocking and, and all of that. So I'm really lucky this actor, um, Luke McFarlane stars in it with me and we just committed to it. You know, we wanted it to be as funny as possible. We wanted it to be explosive and something that, you know, people haven't seen before, something that people wouldn't forget. So it is definitely awkward and, and not, you know, you're not just with the actor. There is a whole crew of people around you. Also, every time you film a sex scene, they tell you in advance, they're like, don't worry, we made it a closed set. No <laughs> one's going to be on set. And then you get there and there were like a hundred people on set. There were more people on set that day than any other day. It was like my fucking cousins were there. I mean, there were like a ton of people on set um, and you just have to ignore it and do your job for the sake of comedy um all right so billy everyone go see bros i have one last question uh this has been great it's the roback question r-h-o-b-a-c-k.com use code take for 20 percent off your first uh for your first purchase q-zips hoodies polos everything at roback.com uh my last question is i didn't i didn't see you at uh marching in the pride parade were you there this year in new york city i was there oh okay yeah i i must have missed you i was also there so i also marched so oh that's nice to view. Well, thank you. Yeah, no. Oh, well, no. Listen, I listen. Don't. I mean, you don't have to thank me, but you're welcome. I am thanking you. No, oh, okay. That's well, nice. I'll take it. Yeah, I, I'll take the thank you. I yeah. drove a, a, a giant gay <laughs> truck around at the shore all summer long. I could have had it rewrapped to put our faces on it, <laughs> but it had the rainbow flag on it. It had Joey and Pat from Out and About. I said, you know what? As an ally, I'd like to go ahead and yeah. represent this brand because that's how much pride means to me. That was the so same truck that I was in that during big, the So who pride would you parade? say is yeah. the bigger ally? Yeah, I was marching. Big Cat, who was in the pride parade, or myself that drove oh. the truck around uh, for an entire month and a half. Yeah, I was in the pride I, parade. A month and a half is a long time. Yeah, I don't yeah. even I don't think even think I would drive a rainbow colored truck around. But it was yeah, free. No, but so I, he, he no, was driving because it was it, free. I did drive it for a month and a half. I have, I have also, two children and really, I, I basically was like, oh, my Sunday think, afternoon. Oh, the other thing with the pride parade, I uh, we I we were supposed to show up at like one o'clock and I don't think our float moved till like five o'clock. It was it was. Oh, crazy. no, it always it always takes forever. It's the longest day. But I will say. I truly do love that we're on part in my take and we have two straight real life bros arguing over who's the bigger ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it, well, So I think it's at, me. At one yeah. point, I, I was trying to merge into traffic with this truck and this car wouldn't let me in. I rolled down my window. I'm like, you goddamn homophobe. Mm-hmm. I was pissed off. <laughs> Like they were, they were discriminating against me, <laughs> thinking that I was gay. That's how much of an ally again, I was. Again, it was a free truck, so he really had no choice. I chose how much, how much to go did it to the cost pride parade. for you to go I, into the well, parade. I, well, a lot of time. Zero it's time dollars. with my family. A Sunday I think next afternoon. year all three of us will be on a, on the bros themed float in the pride <laughs> okay. parade together. You know I what? I'll take you up on that because I've been to a pride parade and I had a blast, so I can That's speak right. from experience. He just drove a truck around. Yeah. Well, I went to Anyone a pride parade a couple a years ago when it oh, wasn't really? content. Oh, okay. When it yeah. was just me yeah. there I doing there. it just for my so. friends. But yeah, it was good. I, I must have missed you, but I, I was there uh, marching in the pride parade. 
we we appreciate your presence and 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 truthfully like you know we we do need all our straight bros and allies at bros opening weekend yes. in movie theaters it's a great fucking movie and you know if you like to laugh funny is funny you're gonna love it and you know We've been watching movies about straight folks for decades, and we need our friends and allies to return the favor now. So uh, please come out and see it, and I really think you're going to love it. I'm going to see it yeah. twice. See it twice, yeah. Nah, you know what? I'm going to see it 10 times. See it, see it. <laughs> I'm going to buy 10 tickets. Um, yeah, I'm going to see it you 10 should, times. You should You should buy out a movie theater. Done. I, I want to do that. You know? Done. We, have, we actually have Chris Evans. We have Captain America himself who is uh, hosting a screening of bros in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's for like bros who love bros who like want to support bros, the movie. And so I would love for you guys to do that. Let's do a part in my take bros screening of bros. I'm, I, I'm in. I'm going to bring everyone that I went to the pride parade with, and I'm going to buy out the whole movie theater. Cause I was at the, pride I, parade. I would love that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Billy. You're the best man. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's wrap up the show. We got Firefest, new segment sponsored by Whatnot. Whatnot, the live stream auction app where you can buy collectibles, comics, and really almost anything else is Barstool's platform of choice to sell all our weirdest and unique office uh, finds memorabilia. Create a Whatnot account using the link in the YouTube description and get $10 off your first purchase. And make sure you follow the Barstool Sports page to get alerted whenever we're going live. Uh, check out Whatnot right now. Tons of auctions, tons of stuff being sold from the Barstool HQ headquarters stuff for my pile. Uh, all on Whatnot. So create a Whatnot account using the link in the YouTube description and get $10 off your first purchase. And make sure you follow the Barstool Sports page to get alerted whenever we're going live. Firefest of the Week, Hank. Big Cat, thank you. Hello. Uh, my Firefest of the Week, mm -hmm. this past weekend, I, I was at Rolling Loud. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, all the, all the wristbands. Sounds sound sick. It was a great time. Sounded uh, so uh -huh. sick, you got sick. I did get sick. That's I don't know if that's a Firefest, but I've been sick. It's not fun. Yeah. Uh, I came home, and my... So I had an old Firefest where I didn't have a key to get into my door. I had to wait outside. There was like one of those electronic lock things, pin number, put your pin number and you can get in the door. So I've just been using that and I have a key to my apartment, but I haven't been bringing my big key out with me, if that makes sense. I got home, it was like one o'clock in the morning, I was pretty, pretty fucked up and the pin thing just didn't work. Like it just wasn't responding and I was just like smashing it, smashing it, smashing it and I just had, I had no idea what to do. I sat there for probably 45 minutes. Oh no just just hitting it and then eventually it just turned on i don't know what i did or what what happened but i i was like i took a walk around the block trying to like i went to get a, a drink at the convenience store just to get like a water and be like what's going on like what am i gonna do am i gonna go sleep in the gambling house i don't know what to do because i'm not gonna start you know i can't bang on the door like no one's gonna come down billy's house billy's house i didn't even really think about that mm -hmm. honestly i figured that billy hurts. was also well i oh, figured billy, yeah he yeah. was in tennessee okay. he's probably also entertaining clients like I wasn't, I was, I was, it was basically gambling house or just like eventually this thing's going to turn on. And I was just drunk enough where I was like, it's going to come on, it's going to come on, it's going to come on. And eventually it did, but it was, I got in at like 2.30. That's always Damn. tough. That's always tough. One time I, I went through a similar experience where I lost my key and I couldn't get in and you just have to sometimes sit down next to your door and just pray to God that it's a someone, neighbor yeah. comes in or out. And yeah. that's a, that's a lonely existence. Yeah. That's brutal. I'm, I'm glad you made it in safe though, Hank. Yeah. Yeah, I did. It could have been ugly. You could have survived out there. You're a warrior. Probably. How yeah. long do you think you could survive on the streets? Like a stray? Uh, a while. Give us a day. Like, Damn. not allowed to go inside any doors. Three weeks. That's okay. a long time, yeah. Nice. Billy, how long do you think you could survive? That should be his punishment if he doesn't want to do the bowling. Yeah. Oh, just live outdoors? I, I'm, like, pumped <laughs> that, that, for the bowling. Mm -hmm. I yeah. can't wait to bowl. You are. Mm -hmm. You're super excited. Super, super excited. I was going to say, I could... I could probably like deciding how long Hot I could dogs. live off, live on the street, just off your stored fat. Yeah, right. I was gonna say I, it's either. Well, the question is, can I live there for a long time because I'm so fat? I'm a fat fuck, or would it be I'm such a fat fuck that like I would die because I'm such a fat fuck? No, I think it'd be it'd be very safe for you in the wintertime because yeah. you've got that. You're like a bear that hibernates. Yeah. I lashed out. I'm sorry. With I, I, wanted, I, just wanted, I want to yeah. put it on the record that I, I apologize for saying that. That was that was 
mostly uncalled for. Very, very pointed. I, I'm sorry that you think I rigged the competition to something I'm good at. I wanted to do something that the people would enjoy. Yeah, I, I, I never double, said that. I'll, I'll eat record. double the hot dogs. Listen, I don't give a fuck. I never said that. For I'll eat record. double the hot As dogs. As a moderator of this conversation, I just want to say, Big Cat, I can't, like, I understand maybe why Hank's upset. But I'm not. You have to also think about it from this perspective, like, Hank would never, ever rig a competition <laughs> that he was setting up to make it more beneficial for himself. <laughs> it just wouldn't oh. happen. So, like, let's give Hank a little credit on this. Yeah, that's true, because you can tune in to episode nine of the mini golf uh, next week. <laughs> Hank played it ten times beforehand. Oh, you're talking about merch oh, blues. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a couple know, of know, things, a couple different ways. Yeah, there's we so can go many. Out. I mean, there's so many. How could <laughs> we have binders full of Hank rigged competitions? Well, 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 that's why Hank was so good at spotting it because he's the expert at yeah, setting it up. Yeah, that's true, and I never even crossed my mind. But yeah, me he, neither. He's been holding on to my 169 <laughs> seven years ago, being like, "This will come in handy." <laughs> All right, PFT. Um, my fire fest is unfortunately we had to. We canceled the festival this weekend because there's a hurricane coming through Atlantic or through Ocean City. Wait, seriously? So the yeah, the entire festival Friday, Saturday, and Sunday just got canceled, and it's a bummer because and it's not like, even like like two seconds ago. Yeah, I can't like two hours ago. Fuck. It's a bummer Sorry. because I was you know I, I talked about it on this show on Monday I was going to get to play with some of my like childhood heroes. Yes. Who were playing at this concert, it would have been awesome and. A lot of people have asked me because I tweeted it out. Like, is are you secretly excited that you get to cancel this plan because it's something you have to go do? Um, no, not at all. Like, I I saw the picture this morning of where they were setting up the stage, and it was like a like a giant festival sound stage. I'm talking like you see at those huge outdoor concerts in like England where everyone's got the flags and shit. Giant stage that was set up on the beach overlooking the water and like ferris wheels and shit it would have been incredible but uh unfortunately there's a hurricane coming to that town sucks so it's canceled um so if anybody knows a place that pup punk can play this weekend in new york city let me know and I, i'll try to get it set up i think that becomes my fire fest that i didn't agree to go yeah because then i could have had that canceled yeah it like been nice. oh i was down to go it would have been really nice yeah uh, I it, was I, I I feel like I was very honest. You asked yeah. the whole group, oh, like, I, does anyone want to come? I was like, well, I am going to Chicago this weekend, so if I weren't, I would at least consider it before I said no. I I invite everybody in the group chat on those types of conversations because I know that Big Cat won't come because he's got family stuff that yeah. he takes care of. But I would have considered. But, it. but it's nice. It's I nice, would have come to this one. But it would have been worse if I hadn't invited anybody. Right. But yeah. I would have come to this one. Yes, this but one I you can't. But you can't because it's, it's unfortunately there's a hurricane. <laughs> I would have. I would have come twice. So it's a bummer. That and I've also been coming I, all weekend. I, I also have broken ribs, which is tough, or broken fractured cartilage in my ribs. But I'm not going to complain about that. I'm just Justin a fucking Herbert's warrior. Playing. I'm a fucking yeah. warrior. I got a tortle shot. I come to work, unlike Stephen A. Smith. That's true. That's a fact. Those are all facts. How was Tortle? Uh, they actually fucked up my injection. Shout out Tyrod Taylor. So they gave me the injection in my arm. And my arm, when you get a shot at Tortle. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's crazy. Like, it burns for a while. It feels so you can, warm. You can feel it go in. Yep. Um, so I got the injection in my left uh, shoulder on Sunday. And it didn't do. It did not make its way over into my ribs at all. Ugh. So, like, there was no pain-killing effect. Then they gave me a painkiller. And uh, they're like, here you go, take this. I was like, I, I have to go work right now. So I couldn't even take the painkiller before I went into the office. So I took it on Monday night. It felt great. Yeah. <laughs> just because we hear all the NFL players talk about it, I just wanted to hear some I've had person. a couple in my back, and it feels so good. <laughs> it does. The warm sensation he's talking about, yeah. like your whole, like my back felt warm. And then uh, they like gave me a steroid pack, and it was like, oh, I feel great. But I wasn't, I wasn't cured. Right. I just felt great. Yeah. It just then like a week later I was like, I still hurt. <laughs> it just it just honestly makes your arm feel warm for a second. And then as it spreads out and dissipates in the rest of your body, at least for me, like I sort of get flushed and sweat yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just cool to be able to say, like, yeah, I got toward all injection ten minutes yeah. a day. Um all right, my fire fest, uh this happens to me uh, every single football season and um I'm nervous that it might stick a little bit longer this year, but uh, I'm starting to like betting unders, and it's a phase I don't like, and I do it every year. I get like a little stretch where I'm like, ooh, I win one under, and I'm like, that was easy. So just everyone understand that if I say I like an under, um, I will get out of this phase. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying some new stuff. I'm trying some new shit. You know, I'm, I went to college, and I tried a little little something different. You experimented. Yeah, so I, I this literally happens – Anyone who's been listening to me talk about gambling for the last decade, they know 
like once a year I will like fall in love with unders for like a two week stretch and then I'll knock myself out of it. I'm deep in it right now. Like I only I look at the board and I'm like, oh, I love all these unders. Yeah. It's gross. You'll you'll phase out of it and you'll get back to betting uh, not on the over for games that you like the under. Right. They, it's, I phase myself out of it. I stop. I stop like just betting unders and then slowly I just it start betting all the overs yeah. and lose all my money. But I think you're set up nicely for this year because we've had so many unders hit recently. Well, that's part of that it. That as the season goes along, that's going to correct itself. Right. Right at the time that you're swinging back into overs mode. So yeah. I think that you're you're probably not going to lose any Sunday or Monday night bets for the rest of the year. It's just a gross feeling. You just don't I don't like doing it. I I, I know when I do it, I'm like this is not me. But I just – something comes over me once a year, and it's just – it's the worst. Sometimes I, I do actually get a sick, perverted, good feeling out of doing that during basketball games. Right. And, like, and, and rooting for double dribbles and shot clock violations. The the thrill you get when there's a shot clock violation and you bet the under, is it's disgusting, and it makes me feel dirty inside. But at the same time, it feels – it and, hurts so good. And really all I need to get out of it is just one of those games where it's like the first half is 6-3 to three, and then the second half is a shootout, and you're like, why didn't I – that's the beauty of life's too short to bet the under. You're yeah. always alive. Yeah. So once that happens, I'll be – I'll snap out of it. But right now I'm going through some shit, so I'd like everyone to, you know, be be nice to me about it. Billy. Uh, a little update on a fire fest I had a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's been four weeks since I got bit by the ticks. Haven't had any reactions Damn yet. Uh, still not. I out mean, of the, I mean. Oh, that's great. Still not out of the woods yet. You, you still putting meat in your mouth? Yeah, I've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. You said not out of the woods because that's where you got them. Yeah, but uh, you got them on your butt too. Yeah. That what, was, where where did you sit down? No, well, they crawl up your leg. It's like Cosette. It must yeah. have crawled into your asshole for warmth. Yeah, because we were doing a, a, a shoot the other day that yeah. I'm sure you'll see soon enough. Very funny commercials to shoot. And Billy was like, I have tick bites on my butt. And we're like, okay. Well, cool. yeah, I had to take my pants off. <laughs> yeah, different story. Well, Pretty we good had commercial. to take your pants off for you. It's going to be a great commercial. It is going to be a commercial. It's yeah. be a great commercial. Um, and then my Firefest is I've also been sick like Hank. Oh, oh, cool. But I, I show up. You guys yeah. doing the same drugs? Or? So our no. fire fest is we're going to be sick. Yeah. But Jake's like I looking at me nodding it's, it's like, like I'm, I'm so wait, sick. Is showing up to work sick like a cool no, thing? No, I beat the <laughs> shit no, it's actually out of the a sickness. bad thing. Yeah. Right. It's Thank you, Hank. making us all sick. Thank you, Hank, for not no, coming but, into work yesterday. But I'm not symptomatic. Like, I'm not symptomatic. I keep my symptoms inside. So you're not sick. You're in denial. You're just yes. making up excuses. So are you sick? No, I beat it. Oh, okay, cool. When? when? When were you sick? Wow. Like, Monday. Okay, so when right you were after, called a hangover. Right after you went to Tennessee? Yeah, that's a hangover. <laughs> no, but I was sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you, you were. You don't sneeze when you're hang hungover. Uh, depends on, yeah, well, it depends on how much cocaine from. you put up your nose. No, Jesus. <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, my sure? fire fest. <laughs> my fire fest is I'm about to get sick. Yeah. yeah at least you're yeah, paranoid Jake. about getting sick. <laughs> Why, now for the next week. Because you're sandwiched between. I'm going to wake up and think, is today the day? Uh, yeah, Jake, you can't live like that. Jake, just dude, keep going. How? Yeah, I'm here. I'm not gonna like hide. No, I know, but like, you can't be like, oh, today's the day that I'm gonna get sick. You just gotta be like, fuck it. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking beat this shit. Yeah. Do you, get some sleep. Do you often wake up with like a tickle in your throat and you're like, horse, it's happening now? Horse. Yeah. Every day. Scratchy throat. Uh, oh, and you're going to see Aaron Judge on Friday. So yeah. You so might I have, have to, to survive one more night. What yeah, about? But you might not make it. I'll make it. Yeah. What about Jake what Plummer's said? mushrooms? Have, have those I've been helped? doing those not as consistently as I like, but I did that more so for the dog allergies. So has it helped? See. We haven't tested it yet. Oh, we got to get a dog in here. Uh, get that dog in you. Yeah. I'll finish the thing first. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's do uh, ping pong oh, balls. Oh, uh, Big Cat. So we talked about this before you came into the room. So with the whole Merch of Palooza, uh, you know, fiasco? back and forth fiasco. Yep. I, it is, to, it, I told Hank. It is a great, great point. I didn't even think about that. Hank literally last episode rigged a competition yes. and then accused me <laughs> yes. of that. Yes. That's I really unbelievable. Yeah. You of uh, but but what, what I did, what I did, Big Cat, is I told, since Jake uh, got steamrolled by Hank in the Merch of Palooza thing, I told Hank that if he that gets the mean? ping pong ball right today, yep. if he guesses it correctly, then I will make Jake whole after Jake pays Hank okay. the money. But Hank's not getting a dime if he doesn't get it right. I also told Jake I wasn't taking his money. So, so I'm are not you a dime do, either way. Are you I, agreeing so, to this? So I'm giving Hank $1,600 if he gets the ping pong ball correct today. I'll double it. So 3200 Yes. 
Wow. You're Plus not going to get it. You're never going to get it. All right, deal. No, so wait, wait. Big, big, big Cat, are, are you doubling mine? I'm doubling yours. And, I, and, I, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to match Big Cat. All right, so, <laughs> let's go. Let's so, go. So now we're this would be heartbreaking, $6, especially after he called so, me a fat fuck with so much, <laughs> $6, so much truth in his voice. So, no, Billy, you don't get any. There, no, no, but there was a, an AWL did the math. The the equivalent of Hank never hitting a number is of hitting the ball nine times. Oh, that's great. Wow. I love it. All right, so uh, he's not going to get this. As of like this. two weeks ago. So if he gets it, he gets $6,400. $6, $17. Okay. Come on. 26 Oh, my God. If you get 18. it, the show would be flipped upside down. He's not going to get down. it. 82. He's, he's never gotten it before. It's the same thing as when he says he's going to get a six-pack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. <laughs> 41. <laughs> All right. What, what's yours, Batgirl? 18. Oh, my God. One time for the kids. Try everything I've been through. Wait, what new number did you pick, Hank? 73. 73. Not oh, even close. Man. I'll do that deal all day. He'll uh, never get it. That was it. so close. He'll Hank. never get it. That was so close. He'll never get it. Penguins shoot their shit away from their nests and like can launch it 20 yards. Love Hank, you I'll do a deal with you real quick, right? Rest of the year. If you don't get it, you got to give me, uh, let's say five grand, and if you get Whoa. it once, I'll give you twenty five hundred. Whoa! I'll match. Deal. I'll match. What so if he gets it's five it twice grand for five grand? Hey, but but if Hank, he gets it twice, deals off. How about how about <laughs> Hank? He's got to get it exactly <laughs> once before the end of the year. How about like Hank that. pays? Yeah. He pays each of us twenty five hundred if he gets it, and then I'll pay twenty five hundred. You pay twenty five hundred. But he, we should get better odds than that. He, get, he has a lot of chances. But he's never going to get it. He sucks Yeah, it's at true. This. He's never going to get it. All right, deal. deal. But if you get it twice, then then it's then it's no. It's exactly once. Understood. Okay. We're okay. going to have to start checking the balls before every – he might rig it. Yeah, he actually definitely will. Good point, Billy. Make sure these <laughs> balls don't get touched by oh, Hank. Billy, that's a new job. It. Before every episode, you have to count every ball in the machine. I, that's I'm, great, though, because then we have a redemption. I think yeah. it should actually – here's what the odds should be. If – you if if you get it once, you get five grand from me and PFT. Love it. If you get it zero times, you have to give us five grand total. Yep. If you get it two times, you have to give us five grand total. No. Yeah. Well, that's, that's not good. Odd. That's terrible. Odd. What are you talking about? That's, You're not going to get it twice. That's, that's. Yeah. Hank, you've never gotten right, it do, once. I'll do five grand, five grand, twenty five hundred for twice. Okay. Or, or you pay three us. grand, fifteen hundred each. Okay. So you pay us three grand if if you get it twice. We pay you five grand if you get it once. You pay us five grand if you get it zero times. Deal. Okay. okay. Deal. Love I don't know. Love I feel it. like that's bad odds for me, but I don't Love care. it. Love it. No, I mean. No, you just heard it. You can't possibly like be this bad times. for that long. What if I get it three times? Oh, God. No, Hank. Like, three grand why, back to me. Why are you afraid? Yeah, that you're I should get, get redemption. I should, I, there should always be fine, redemption. Fine, fine, fine. Three grand back three to you if you get three you. times. Right. Fine, yeah. fine, fine. And at four grand, you have to you have to give Billy $10,000. <laughs> four <laughs> times. And suck his Yes, yes. Suck the ticks off his ass. 